honorable members, I have examined and approved the votes and proceedings of Tuesday, 19, 16th February 2021. I have uh, an announcement from Honorable David Abel for death notification. Mr. Speaker, I write to formally inform you of the demise of Honorable D.C. Jose, an erstwhile member of the 8th Assembly. He died on the 26th day of January 2021, and the burial arrangements are as follows. 11th of February 2021, there will be a wake keep at his, re at his residence, FAB Metropolis Estate. <clears throat> and on the 12th of February 2021, his body will be live, will leave Abuja to Taraba State in Kurmi local government for final interment on the 13th of February. He represented the good people of Sadana, Gashaka, Kurmi Federal Constituency, Taraba State, which I am now representing as his successor. Kindly accept my esteemed regards, Mr. Speaker. Yours faithfully, David Abel, for South America University. I've just been informed on the award of a doctorate degree on leadership and governance <clears throat> by South American University. The award was given to Honorable Maki, Deputy Chairman, Defense. Congratulations. Honorable colleagues, much as it gives me great pain to announce this, it is something that needs to be done. I wish to notify honorable members of the House of Representatives, pursuant to Section 681B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, that the seat of Abba North South Federal Constituency of Abia State has become vacant. This vacancy is as a result of the death of Honorable O.C. Prestige on 6 February 2021, which was announced at House Plenary on 9 February 2021. He was a member of the All Progressive Grand Alliance. This notification is in fulfillment of Section 68, Subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, and for the records. <clears throat> Are there any petitions? Petitions? Um, Prof. Mr. Speaker, I'm Professor Julius Yonvere, OOM, member representing No One Federal Constituency, Edo State. I have a petition from one of my constituents, Mr. Edo Nijio Yakilome, requesting this House's intervention to restore him to his position at the National Youth Service Corps. I seek the permission of the Speaker and the House to lay this petition. Please go ahead. Honorable, go ahead.
Go ahead. No, not you, Honorable Chidoka. Who's that behind? Olabi, yes. Go ahead, please. Mr. Speaker, I have with me two petitions from my constituents. My name is Robert James Adisan Olabi, representing the Fakoja in Federal Constituency. I have a petition from the late Mrs. Moe North Amori Rabi against pension transfer arrangement for dismissal and unpaid entitlement. The above petitions are from my constituents. The late mother was dismissed from NYCHA in 2006, and the entitlement is yet to be paid to her children. The second was, one is the petition for the Euro family against the Federal Ministry of Power over the installation and erection of high tension power line on their family land. The above petition are my, also for my constituents, the family of Euro plea for proposition of their family land from the Federal Ministry of Power. I seek your indulgence to lay the two petitions out. You may lay your petition. Honorable Chiloka. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. My name is Obinna Chidoka, member representing Idemini North, Idemini South, Federal Constituency of Anambra State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to bring a petition on behalf of my constituent, Mr. Mone Mem Kristen Chukwemeka, whose complaint is of alleged inhuman treatment, unlawful illegal detention, prosecution and imprisonment of Mr. Kristen for 423 days against the police and immigration officers of Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates while on transit from Sao Paulo, Brazil, to Lagos, Nigeria, between 2014 to 2015. Right Honorable Speaker, with your kind permission, I would like to lay this petition, and my constituents hope that this House will come to its aid in getting a redress on this human treatment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, you may lay your petition. Any other petition? Leaders and colleagues, my name is Olubu uh, Kola I represent all the people of Rekwadu, Olorunda, Urulu, Osogbo Federal Constituency. I am from Osho, the state of the Virtuous. I have uh, a petition here, which is for the gruesome attack and murder of one of my constituents. Mr. Speaker, sir, I seek your permission. Lay the petition. You will lay your petition, Honorable Yo. Any other petition? This row, no petition. No petition. Uh, Mr. Adipe. My name is Honorable Cholu Lopoya Konde Shadipe, and I represent Oluyoli Federal Constituency in Oyo State. I arise to bring two petitions on behalf of ex NEPA PHCN staff who have not been paid their entitlement since 2013. I also bring a petition on behalf of Professor Abiodu Olukoga, a Nigerian citizen who has been victimized in South Africa and has, which has led to the demise of his wife in 2017. May I lay the two petitions, sir? Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No more petitions. All petitions refer to Committee on Public Petition. Um, I have an answer. Members who came in without signing for their Green Chamber magazine should um, approach the entrance desk to sign for their magazines, signed by Benjamin Carlo. So we move on. Um, Honorable Afe.
Honorable, Honorable High Chief Efe Afe, member representing the good people of Okwe, Sapele, and Uya Federal Constituency of Delta State. I have a matter of urgent public importance, and it goes to us. Matter of urgent public importance on the need for the federal government to reopen Osubi Airport for operations. He has no that if as far as Let's have somebody second that. Okay, I have to be seconded. Honorable um, Oluga. Right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable colleagues, my name is Representative Taiwo Oluga. I speak for the people of Firewale, Aida Desh, your conferral constituency in Osho State. So, Speaker, I rise this morning to second the motion as moved by my colleague. I so second. Okay, so the motion is uh, for the reopening of um, Wari Airport. <coughs> All those who think this is um, urgent enough to say aye. As against this evening, I have it. What about it? Move your motion. Well, Sapele and Uvia Federal Constituency of Delta State. Mr. Speaker, this motion has to do with the opening of Wari Airport, otherwise known as Osubi Airport. The House knows that infrastructure is due to enhance standard of living, security movement, as well as attracting commercial activity. Wari Airport, also known as Osubi Airport, is an imp important facility that was privately owned and operated by Shell, SPDC. It is located in Osubi community in open local government area, which fall within my federal constituency. Further note that Shell, John W. Company, built the airport and owned it and was commissioned on the 1st of April 1991. Landed on a modern Daniel 328, an aero contractor 50 passenger dash aircraft, reckoned to be one of the busiest aviation facilities in Nigeria. And it has been operated in partnership with other oil companies. The airport was later acquired by the federal government in 2015 and was leased to Shaw Oil Services Limited, who managed the facility recently until it was terminated in February 2020. Aware that the termination was as a result of a rate of complaint by airline operators who used the airport. It was alleged that there was instance of shoreline oil company could not provide power for the aircraft to land or take off, an inability to fulfill financial commitment to federal government agencies, such as FAN, NCAA, and NAMA. Convinced that construct the portals of airport to Nigeria and oil and gas operations, and other commercial activities in the region, the Federal Ministry, through the Ministry of Aviation, should consider the opening of the airport for operations for economic activities of the region, especially the Niger Delta. Further convinced that the airport availability available for the different agencies concerned, such as Federal Aviation Authority Fund, Niger Airspace Management Agency, Niger Civil Aviation Authority, ETC. Indicate that the airport is viable and still meet up with very necessary precautions safety measures, especially during this COVID-19 epidemic. Mr. Speaker, fellow honourable member, the judge should resolve that all the federal government, through the Ministry of Aviation and other relevant agencies of government, to ensure that Osubi Airport is reopened for operation as soon as possible. I beg to move. Thank you. Honorable Ningi. <clears throat> Honorable Ningi, can you second? Right, Honorable Speaker, my respected colleagues, I remain Abdullah Isaat Abdul Kadir. 
I'm representing Ningyi Warji, federal constituency of the new oil producing state, that is Bauchi State, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion ably moved by Honorable High Chief Efe Afe on the need to reopen Wari Airport for the benefit of Nigerians in that axis. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, straightforward, we'll just put the question. Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. Honorable Edem. Distinguished colleagues, my name is Edem Unyime. Member representing Ukanafun, Urugunam Federal Constituency in Aquarium State. Mr. Speaker, I have an audience motion this morning, and it's a call on the service chiefs and the Inspector General of Police to intensify efforts in the rescue of the abducted school children and staff of Government Science Secondary School, Kagara. Niger States. I would like to seek the leave of the House to suspend our relevant rules so that this matter can be taken. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Honorable William, I think your motion has been overtaken by events. The students have already been. No, they have not been released. Released. The, the students have not been released. Hmm? The students have not been released. It's only the. The passengers that have been released. The students have not been released. The passengers. The students have not been released. It's only the passengers that have been released. Okay, I thought you said all those captured by the. So you are restricting this to the students. Only the students. Only the students. But some some students were released. If I. As of this morning, no students have been released. Apart none from at all. None. Okay. Apart Any second there. Honorable, I hate to call you Ujaya. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Honorable, yeah, go ahead. Right, honorable speaker. Highly respected colleagues. My name is Honorable Adewumi Oriyomi Ononuga. I represent the fabulously United People of Ikene, Shagamu, Remo North. I am from Ogun State, and I stand to second the motion every move by Honorable Edem. I so second. Um. Those in favor that this matter is urgent enough, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, have it. Honorable Deb, move your move. Member representing Okanafun, Orogonam Federal Constituency of Aquaibon States. Please capture your motion properly that this is for. Restricted to the students, not all those captured. Yes, yes, sir. The House aware that on Wednesday, February 17, 2021, at about 2 a.m., the Government Science Secondary School, Kagara, Niger State, was attacked by unknown gunmen, reportedly dressed in military uniform, and killed one student, abducted 27 students, and three members of the staff alongside 12 of their relatives and several others running into nearby bush for their safety. Note that while the federal government and the security agencies were working in securing the release of the several abducted persons, another occurrence in Chiruru, also in Niger State, on Thursday, February 18, 2021, where gunmen attacked and killed one person, injured two, and yet to be a certain number of abducted persons. Devastated 
that the affected pupils and their families will be deeply traumatized, especially the family of the deceased people. One can only imagine how the abductees will be faring under the armed bandits and what kind of reorientation they will be receiving, leaving their parents, guardians, and relations to suffer insomnia. Sudden that the abductors released images of their location and one of them was holding a rocket propelled grenade, a shoulder fired missile weapon that launches rocket equipped with an explosive warhead which only federal government could grant the license. Adopted persons could also be seen sitting on the floor and covered in dust. Note that the recent happenings, in part particularly in Niger State, is horrible, and the government must move swiftly to curtail this menace, else we will soon have a nation of perpetual anarchy. The House resolved to condemn in totality the attack and adoption of students and staff of government science secondary school, Kagara, Niger State, which occurred on February 17, 2021. Two, mandate all service chiefs, the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies to intensify efforts for the rescue of the abductees. Mandate the House Committee on National Security and Intelligence to ensure compliance. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, I so move. Thank you. Honorable Patrick Isower. Okay, Honorable Harry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Distinguished colleagues, our men, Honorable Ari Mohammed Abdelmoumi, member representing National Auto Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, sir, I stand to second the motion, heavily moved by a colleague as well second. I think it's a good bill. Um, we'll just put a question. Those in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, sir. What's your point of order? Information? Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I am a Bokers of Flatter. I represent the new Akrika Sama Guri Federal Consumer System. I'm from Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, I want to draw the attention of honorable colleagues to the fact that we have amended our rules and clearly defined what qualifies as a matter of urgent public importance. Anything that if not addressed immediately will cause the loss of lives and properties are the ones that qualify as a matter of urgent public importance. Anything short of that does not qualify. And we are supposed to take only two at a city. Yet members know that this is the rule, but they consistently pressure Mr. Speaker into allowing them to take matters of agenda reporters which are not urgent at all. Therefore, members are to note that henceforth, even if Mr. Speaker was pressured to call a member, we are called, we are going to draw the attention of Honorable Speaker to that infraction, and Mr. Speaker will be compelled by the rule, the rule, by obedience of the rule, to step down that matter. Because this issue has consistently eaten into our time. It has consistently eaten into our time 
matters that ordinarily ought to have come up under under motion or notice. Pre Mr. Speaker is pressured into getting them uh, under, 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 under matters of urgent uh, 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 public importance. And therefore, this is the last time Mr. Speaker will no longer test Even if he agrees, we are going to draw, draw his attention and it will be stepped down. Thank you. All right. Um, the chairman business and rules are spoken that we should comply with our rules strictly and reason being that he has given is that uh, most especially that this affects the other paper affects the time affects the other paper and destabilizes the sitting of the house the matters ordinarily that should be under brought under motion or notice that are not objectively considered urgent are brought and sometimes we take three four sometimes five and when you try to explain to members they tell you that their own is different so please take note of what uh, the chairman business and rules has said and luckily the for the first time the rules have did in the rule book has defined defined by definition what is urgent public importance so before you bring a motion for urgent public importance please look at the definition properly under the rules thank you uh chairman business and rules um point of order what's your point of order thank you mr speaker uh, my name is solomon Paul from river state my point of order Honorable is premised on your, the six on privileges. Please put on your mask. Pardon me? Your mask. Put on your mask. No, no, I want to be heard. I want to be heard. No, we hear you. Put on your mask. I'm putting on my mask. You're hearing me. Please. Members are asking that you put on your mask. <laughs> I know. I am putting I'm on my mask. You're hearing me. It's a no, privilege. It's not, it's you are bringing it's your motion, uh, your part of order under privilege. Yes, Mr. Speaker. It is a privilege for members that you wear your mask. Okay, I've, I've done that they are protected. I, I, I've complied. I've complied now. Mm. I've complied. Thank you. Uh, my point of order is um, essentially I agree with what the chairman um, rules and business said, but I also want to add that members should restrict themselves to matters that concern their constituency. Uh -uh. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. We are here representing constituencies. We're not here, well, in theory, we represent the entire country. But specifically, we represent constituencies. I was a bit taken aback by the motion moved by my honorable friends, uh, Mr. Amana. That thing happened in uh, Niger State. He has no specific knowledge of the circumstances over there. What well, I want to glean from the media. That, me, that motion should have better come from someone from Niger. We are here, what we're doing here basically is um, pork, what Americans call pork barrel representation. You deal with issues that concern your constituency within your state. So I was a bit taken aback. That motion should have come from him. No matter how intentional it was, he should have passed it on to somebody from Niger to move it. And add more flesh to the bone about what we knew already in the media. Okay, but the, beyond what uh, we already knew from the media, there was nothing spe spe specific about what he said to us that we already didn't know. So my view is that members should limit themselves to issues that concern their constituency. Thank you. Thank you, Rebob. You raise a very interesting point, but I might want to disagree with you. Whilst we're here, primarily we all represent one constituency or the other. Um, we also represent Nigeria. And I think it's important if you read your, the oath that you swore in your constitution, your oath does not restrict you to your constituency. It restricts you to the constitution and to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, and it's also important to also understand that if every member is here and restricted and straight jacketed to things that happen in his constituency, 
then there's no point and the state assemblies can just we can just dissolve the national assembly and let the state assembly go. the title of the point of order the title is motion of urgent public importance public so it's national in nature whilst it may affect even only your constituency that's fair enough you can bring it even if a person you have but it has to meet that threshold of urgent and public importance and as defined in the rule book that if we don't take it at that point in time whether it's restricted to your country to your constituency or not if we don't take it it will be problematic and talking about niger state brought by honorable Eden, yes he's not from niger state he's not but how do you know that members of of his constituency are not students at that school you don't know that there's no way to know that so your point of order is overruled honorable rotimi this one you have to take permission for the house to grant you leave since it's the third one and then we'll move on if the house believes that we should take a third matter Thank you, Mr. Speaker, dear colleagues, my powerful colleagues. Uh, I'm coming under Order 804. Now, this matter is important, and I appeal that we take it. Incessant breach of the Procurement Act by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, a need to forestall the continued illegality. I I am appealing to you to consider it important and for us to suspend our rules for me to be able to take it. Mr. Speaker, I saw. Uh, under the new rule as proposed or as elucidated by the Chairman of Business and Rules, that motion will ordinarily be a motion on notice. But because, I want to appeal to member because let us because this is has just been brought to our attention by chairman business we'll start this from our next sitting so that's uh, just for today uh, hopefully we'll be able to give uh honorable rotimi an opportunity to move his motion honorable uh, nonuga mr speaker highly respected colleagues my name is Honorable Otumba Adeumi Oriyomi Ononuga. I represent the fabulously United People of Ikene, Shagamu, Remonov. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I am from Ogun State and I rise to second the motion, ably moved by Honorable Adusoi. I so second. Let us probably say aye. Who's against the name? Aye, Zabir. Honorable Rotim. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, dear colleagues. My name is Honorable Prince Rotibi Agusoye, representing Kushope Federal Constituency of Lagos. The motion before us has to do with incessant breach of the Procurement Act by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, a need to foster the continued illegality. They have The House recalls that the National Primary Health that the National Primary Health Care Development Agency is a body corporate established by an act of parliament to, among other things, improve the development of primary health care services in Nigeria. Aware that the certain capital projects were voted for and passed in favor of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency in the 2020 Appropriation Act. Cognizant that some of the self capital projects in the MPHCDA in their various specific forms were designated to be cited within several federal constituencies across Nigeria. The House notes that the MPHCDA 
had since purportedly concluded their procurement processes and awarded the said projects to different companies they deemed fit for execution. The House is worried that several members of the House of Representatives have expressed their displeasure as so many anomalies stemming out of the execution of the said capital projects in almost all the federal constituencies. Both are worried that many of the projects awarded by the NPHCDA were poorly or inadequately executed. We have been inundated with co complaints of supplies of absolutely different items from the specification in the Appropriation Act 2020. Other members have their complaint of fake or substandard items or express dissatisfaction on the relevance of the item supplied, while others complain that the items were not commensurate with the amount stated in the Appropriation Act 2020. The House, the House is determined to ensure that all government agencies have strict compliance with the Procurement Act and to make sure the project's executions conform with relevant appropriation acts. The House is accordingly resolved to, one, set up an ad hoc committee to immediately commence investigation into the allegation and report back to the House in four weeks. Two, urge the National Primary Health Care Development Agency to ensure strict compliance in procurement processes and that projects conform to relevant appropriation acts. I so agree, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Abedjide. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Leke Abedjide is my name. I represent the good people of Yagwafera constituency and from Kogi State. I arise to second the motion ably moved by Honorable Rotimi. I so second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, straightforward motion. Important as well. Um, those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. Um, Honorable Chidoka, Honorable Leo Ogo, please can you ensure that uh, your caucus seat is filled? It's glaringly, uh, there's so many people missing from the leadership of the, the minority. Even though the numbers are doing the it's still important that we... Who's acting? Okay, um, the minority leadership, have you all taken your seats? Everybody's okay? Okay. I have an announcement from Honorable Dr. Abiola Peter Makinde. Defection notice from the African Democratic Congress, ADC, to the All Progressive Congress. I write to formally notify Your Excellency and the House of Representatives of my defection from the ADC to the APC. My decision is largely due to the leadership crisis, which has factionalized the party and created a state of division at all levels of the party. Hence, my decision to defect after due consultation with my people. I would like to specially thank the Honorable Speaker, Mr. Wright, Honorable Femi Gwajabi Amri, and the Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable Idris Wase, Ondo State Governor, Rotimi Akeridolu, and Ondo State Caretaker Chairman of the APC for their effort in making this possible. Signed, Honorable Dr. Abiola Peter Makinde. 
Dr. Makideya, welcome to the Progressive Party. Point of order, you are only acting. What's your point of order? What's your point of order? Are you, you have not recognized now? Is a Chinoka that is a... Yes, um, we are all in the same... Yes, sir. As a minority leader, <laughs> acting, acting, I will yield the floor to Reverend. Oh, 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 you want to yield the floor to him? Yes, yes. As a leader, I'm yielding the floor to him, sir. <laughs> Please, sir, we are consulted, and I will yield the floor to him on a very serious note. Honorable Saim. Yes, sir. Thank you. Honorable, wait, Honorable Saim, are you speaking as the acting minority leader? Ah, are you speaking as the acting minority leader? Because, no, 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 not you. I'm not asking you. Are you speaking as the acting minority leader? Are you speaking <laughs> as the acting delegated minority delegated leader? leader? You are eroding us, sir. You are eroding us. I'm not asking about the powers delegated to you. I'm asking if you are speaking as the acting minority leader. What are, what are you speaking as? I agree. So, but you are not speaking as the active minority leader. Honorable <laughs> Sai, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues. I remain honorable Osai Nicholas Osai. I represent Indoko Kwani Federal Constituency of Delta State, Mr. Speaker, by the reason of the point of order, which is the Constitution, which is the operational compass upon which this House rely on all facts and figures to make legislations and statutes. It is upon that that I lay my ground. And my grounds is in section 68, subsection 1, and section, and section 68, subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Speaker, which, which the Supreme Court, over the times and over the years, have adjudicated upon this particular section. And Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, Mr. Speaker has announced to us that a member defected but has not given evidence of that defection. It is upon that ground that I'm laying it, and I read with your counsel, uh, permission, Mr. Speaker. I'll read 68, and I'll read subsection 2. A member of the Senate or House of Representatives shall vacate his seat in the House of which he is a member if he becomes a member of another legislative house. Any other circumstances arises that if he if he, if he were not a member of the, of the Senate or the House of Representatives, I will cause him to be disqualified for election as a member. Without just cause, he is absent from uh, this since then subsection 2. The President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House of Representatives, as the case may be, shall give effect to the provision of subsection 1 of this section. So, however, under the President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House of Representatives, a member shall first present evidence satisfactory, evidence satisfactory on the line, satisfactory to the House as consigned, to the entire House, not to the, not to the presiding officers only, to the entire House, a copy of that evidence, the reason why he or she is defecting from a party to another party. And upon this ground, Mr. Speaker, and upon this ground, upon this ground, Mr. Speaker, none of us, none of us, because we swore to an oath, none of us have received that evidence. No, no, I have received. None of us I have, received. have received that evidence. I have received, yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, my question is this. Since, the, since this house is ruled by facts and not speculation, and since this house is ruled by facts and not speculation, it is my honor, my privilege of a member of this house, that the needful shall be done. Yes. Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleague, I have not received, my constituents have not received, my minority parties have not received. 
It is on those grounds that I say you should void the particular defection. I should void the particular defection. Tell me you have beaten me. I don't know what to talking about. Tell me you have I haven't laid my grounds. I haven't laid my grounds. Mr. Speaker, this is honorable colleagues. I urge you as I've already urged myself to support this fundamental constitutional and jurisdictional issue as laid down by me. I rest my case. Thank you. Honorable Sai, thank you very much. I'm sure you know the word evidence could be either documentary or verbal. Correct? I have just read out the letter from the member telling us reasons why he has living he is leaving his party. Since I've been in this house, that is the evidence in the last almost 20 years that I've been in this house that has always been presented, even from PDP. Two, can I ask you who the party chairman is, his party chairman is? Do you know the, chairman, the name of the chairman in ADC? ADC. Tell us. Mr. Speaker. Can you tell us the name of the chairman of the party where he defected from? Mr. Speaker, I'm a member of PDP and a member of opposition. All right, so you can sit down. So yeah, you I'm do not know the chairman. name of the chairman of the party where he is coming from. Do you know what that makes you in law, since you were quoting law? That makes you what they call a meddlesome interloper. It means... It means you do not have locusts. If it is called, you are called a busybody. You have no locus. It is only a member of ADC that can stand up and refute whatever the man has said. Because you don't know what's going on in his party. You don't even know the name of the chairman of his party. So your objection is overruled. Um... I have a letter from Mr. President, transmission of the 2021 budget of the Nigeria Police Trust Fund for consideration, pursuant to sections 4, 5, and 21 of the Nigerian Police Trust Fund Establishment Act 2019. I forward here with the 2021 budget proposal of the Nigerian Police Trust Fund and the kind consideration and passage by the House of Representatives. The estimates of revenue and expenditure of the fund's 2021 budget proposal are consistent with the statutory purpose of the Nigeria Police Trust Fund in terms of providing funding through a special intervention fund for one, training and retraining of personnel of the Nigerian police force to enhance their skills and enable their overall improvement, performance and efficiency in the discharge of their duties as, and responsibilities. Two, procurement of state-of-the-art security equipment, operational vehicles and other related facilities to enhance the skills of the personnel of the Nigerian police force in handling operational equipment. Three, Construction of police stations, barracks, and other living facilities for personnel of the Nigerian police force and their dependents. And four, procurement of instructional materials and training equipment, as well as paying for the cost of participation of personnel of the Nigerian police force of, at seminars, conferences, and other skills acquisition courses. Whilst appreciating your, on your usual expeditious consideration of this submission, please accept, right honorable speaker, the assurance of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Mohamed Buhari. Honorable Kubo, this will be passed on to your committee. It's Larry Smart that day.
Honourable members, the first business of the day is presentation of five bills. I now invite the clerk to read their short titles. Honourable Speaker, Honourable Members, Witness Protection and Management Bill 2021, first reading. Public Interest Disclosure and Protection Bill 2020, first reading. National Mental Health Bill 2021, first reading. Nigeria Police Academy Establishment Bill 2021, first reading. University of Agriculture and Technology, Okogun Bill 2021, first reading. Uh, Chairman of Business and Rules, can you step down the next item? Since we've just taken the letter today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, hold, hold on one second. Second business of the day. It's okay, uh, Chairman Business and Rules. Don't worry. Second business of the day is presentation of report. Of the Committee on, Pol on Police Affairs on the issuance from the uh, Consolidated Revenue, the sum of 11 billion three hundred and fifty two million four hundred and fifty seven thousand one hundred and one naira seventy cobble of which one hundred and seventy six million seven hundred and sixty eight thousand five hundred and twenty six naira fifty cobble only is for personnel expenditure five hundred and forty seven million one hundred and twenty five thousand five hundred and ninety two naira twenty cobble is for overhead expenditure and the sum of ten billion six hundred and twenty eight million five hundred and sixty two thousand nine hundred and eighty three thousand naira is for capital expenditure for the year ending thirty april twenty twenty one standing in the name of honorable usman bilo kumo honorable kumo is invited to present the report thank you mr speaker thank you my respective colleagues Belokumo is my name. I represent the good people of Akko Federal Constituency and from the state. I rise to the House to do receive the report on the Committee on Police Affairs on the issue from the Consolidated Revenue, the sum of 11 billion 352 of of which 176, 768, 5252 only is for personal expenditure. 547, 125, 520 cobo overhead expenditure. The sum of 10 billion, 628, 562. 983 only is for the capital expenditure of their ending in 30th April 2021. I so move. Honorable Zainab Gimba, please second. Thank you. 
Those in support, please say hi. Those against you, say nay. Eyes have it. Honorable Kuo, please lay your report. Third business of the day is presentation of report on the Committee on Electoral Matters. Uh, Chairman, uh, Electoral Committee, let's, uh, we need to step this down for a minute. Let's step this down for today. Uh, Chairman, please step this report down for today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I'm Abubakar Safulata. I represent the Premier Akrika Sama. Good evening, Mr. Speaker. I'm from the Governor's State. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do step down consideration of the report on the Committee on Electoral Matters. I so move. The matter step down. The fourth business of the day is we will report on the ad hoc committee on the screening of nominees for appointments of Chief of Defense Staff and Service Chiefs of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, starting the name of Honorable Babajide Adegoki Benson. Honorable members will recall that the matter was referred to the ad hoc committee on Wednesday, 10th February 2021. The report is now ready for presentation. Honorable Benson is invited to present the report. I crave, the, I crave your indulgence to lay re the report that the House do receive the report of the Ad Hoc Committee on the screening of nominees for appointment as Chief of Defense Staff and Service Chiefs of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Any second? Honorable Marky. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, I am Mwetke Aubakar Eleman. I'm from the Gao State. I represent Madam Odori Kauga, my federal constituency. I stand to second the report heavily moved by my chairman. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Okay. Those who support, say aye. Those against, say nay. Aye, sir. My Benson, please lay your report. Fifth business of the day is the general of report on the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services on the need to investigate the management, disbursement, and infrastructure delivery by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund in public institutions in Nigeria, standing in the name of Honorable Aminu Suleiman. Honorable members will recall that the matter was referred to the Committee on Thursday, 27 February 2020. The report is ready for presentation. Honorable Suleiman is invited to present the report. Morning, sir. Hey. Honorable Speaker, honorable colleagues, with the leap of the House, I want to proceed to present the report on item four, as stated here in the paper order. And that the House do receive the report of the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services on the need to investigate the management, disbursement, 
an infrastructure delivery by the Tertiary Institution Trust Fund in public institutions of Nigeria. I ask for the leave of the Speaker to kindly lay the report. I so present, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Babakir Ibrahim, representing Malam Fashi Kavul Federal Constituency. I'm from Katsina State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion that to support the lay of the report as presented by Honorable Aminu. Honorable colleagues, please, can you go back to your seat? Honorable colleagues, please. Can you please excuse me, Mr. Speaker, please? Uh, yes. Chairman Federal Character. Uh, you are warning me. Is, is Chairman Federal Character here? Kusada. If you see, please see Honorable Bob. Uh -huh. If you see, I please see on the wall. Chairman Federal Character, he has an issue. Honorable colleagues, please, can we list it? Uh -uh. Honorable colleagues, please, can you have your seat at the back? I want to start calling you. Those in support of the motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. I have him. Honorable Aminu Suleiman, please lay your report. First order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill of an act for an act to repeal the Explosives Act, Cap E18 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and enact Explosives Bill to make comprehensive provisions for the use and control of explosives in Nigeria and for related matters. Stand in the name of Honorable Shaulu, Honorable Sergius Ogun. Honourable members will recall that the bills were consolidated on Thursday, 3rd December 2020, and I invited Honourable Shaulu to move that the bill be now read a second time. Honourable Shaulu. Sorry, I'm discussing the rules. You know, he has over Honourable Speaker and colleagues, my name is Rumande Shaulu Kwewu. Representing Takum, Donga, Usa, and Yangtu Federal Constituency in Taraba State. Arise to move that the bill for an act to repeal the Explosives Act, Cap E18, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and enact Explosives Bill to make comprehensive provisions for the use and control of explosives in Nigeria and for related matters. Be read a second time. I so move. Honorable Ogun, Sergius. Is Honorable Sergius here? Okay, Honorable Archibald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Distinguished colleagues, my name is Dr. Henry Okon Archibong. I represent the people of Itu. Federal constituency in Akwaibom State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second that the bill be read a second time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, those in support, please say aye. Once again, please say yay. The ayes have it. Clark. Please read the, read the wrong, wrong title. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to repeal the Explosives Act, Cap E18, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, 
and the enact explosives bill to make comprehensive provisions for the use and control of explosives in Nigeria and for related matters. Second reading. Second order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill for an act to establish the Federal College of Agricultural Produce Technology Cano to provide for its functions, promote second sound and basic scientific training as a foundation for the development of food storage, pest control, food chemistry, agriculture and food production, taking into account indigenous culture, the need to enhance national unity, the need to vastly increase the practical content of student training and Honorable adequate Collins, preparation please. of graduates Can you put, for self-employment in agriculture and allied Honorable professions Collins, at the back. and for related no, matters standing in the name please. of Honorable Dederi Haruna Isa. I remember to recall that the bill was read for the first time on 21st July 2020 and I invite Honorable Isa to move that the bill be now read a second time. Sorry, the last bill is referred to, I believe, yeah, that bill is referred to national security and intelligence. No, hold on. Yes, national security and intelligence. All right, well, Lisa, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. German Business. My name is Honorable Haruna Isa Dederi. German Business. I represent Kala Erogo Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, I'm from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that a bill for an act to establish Federal College of Agricultural Produce Technology Kano to provide for its functions and promote sound and basic scientific training as a foundation for the development of food storage, pest control, food chemistry, agriculture and food production, taking into account indigenous culture, the need to enhance national unity, the need to vastly increase the practical content of student training and the adequate preparation of graduates for self-employment in agriculture and allied professions and for related matters be read the second time. I so move, sir. Honorable Idris, Abu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. My name is Honorable Kabir Idris, member representing Kula Madobiga Rumala. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Kano State. I rise to support this very important motion, heavily moved by my very good brother, Honorable Dederi. I so support, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Dederi, I think this is straight, straightforward. Let me just put the question. Those in support that this uh, bill will be now read a second time, please say aye. Just against, please say nay. Ayes have it. Clap. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to establish Federal College of Agricultural Produce Technology, CANO, to provide for its functions and promote sound and basic scientific training as a foundation for the development of food storage, pest control, food chemistry, agriculture and food production, taking into account indigenous culture, the need to enhance national unity, the need to vastly increase the practical content of student training and adequate preparation of graduates for self-employment in agriculture and allied professions and for related matters. Second reading. 
be referred to the committee on agricultural colleges and institutions. Honorable colleagues, I hope the leader of the house has been around. Leader of the house. Honorable colleagues, I hope the leader of the house has been around. He's supposed to pass some messages around, some quiet messages. You done? Okay, thank you. The third order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill for an act to alter the second schedule of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to remove prisons from the exclusive list, provide for establishment of correctional centers in the concurrent list, and for related matters, standing in the name of Honorable Benjamin Kalu. I know members recall that the bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 15 December 2020, and I invite Honorable Kalu to move that the bill be read a second time. Honorable Kalu. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, my name is Benjamin Okezi Kalo. I represent the good people of Nigeria, starting from Ben, the federal constituency. Honorable colleagues, I am from Abia State, the God's own state. I rise to seek the leave of this Honorable House for a bill for an act to alter the second schedule to the constitution to remove prison from the exclusive list to provide for the establishment of correctional centers in the concurrent list and for related matters to be read the second time. There's, there's so many hands up. It looks like this is a popular constitutional amendment. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable colleagues, I, Lawan Shetima Ali, representing the good people of Brosari, Gaidem, Unusari, Federal Constituency, I stand to Second, the motion ably been ably put up by my boss, Honorable Ben Carlo. I saw second, sir. That's it. Uh, okay, Honorable Carlo, one minute on this. Uh, it's, it seems popular enough. Lead the debate for a minute, please, Honorable Kalu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I still remain Honorable Benjamin Kalu, representing the good people of Nigeria, starting from Ben, the federal constituency. I'm from Abia State. Uh, one minute might be too small, but I'll try my best. Mr. Speaker, the background of this bill uh, is, as we all know, the prisons in Nigeria lack the capacity to reform errant members of the society sent there for correction. Rather than being reformed and turning a new leaf, many offenders sent to the prisons turn out to become even more hardened. It is clearly known that obsolete legislation, slow justice system, and inadequate funding are prominent on the list of challenges bedeviling the Nigerian prisons to reform locked up inmates. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the new Correctional Services Act, which repealed and replaced the Prison Act, and consequently changed the name from the Nigerian Prison Service to the Nigerian Correctional Service, reflects the need for the reform of the system. We are aware that beyond the name change, the law has many provisions which are laudable and cheering. For instance, as a direct response to the overcrowded prisons, the law in its section 18, uh, section 12, subsection 8, empowers the state controller of correction services to reject the intake of additional inmates where the facility under his watch 
is fuel to capacity. This section 12, subsection 8 reads as follows. Without prejudice to subsection 4, the State Controller of Correctional Services, in conjunction with the Correctional Center Superintendent, shall have the power to reject more intakes of inmates where it is apparent that the Correctional Center in question is fueled to capacity. Mr. Uh, Speaker, honorable colleagues, the major challenges of our correctional system is very obvious in this proposal. The problem of prison congestion in the country is huge. For instance, in March 2019, addition of the Lagos State Criminal Information System revealed that though the five prisons in Lagos State have a combined holding capacity of 4,087 inmates, they were holding 9,044 inmates, Mr. Speaker. A former controller of prisons in Lagos State, Mr. Tunde Ladepo, said the Badagri prison which was built to hold only as little as 100 inmates, was at the time holding 700 inmates. Furthermore, it is instructive to note that there are 240 prisons in Nigeria with an official capacity of 50,153 inmates, but currently holding over 74,000 inmates. In fact, overcrowding of prison is serious challenge and an obstacle to the implementation of the standard minimum rule for the treatment of prisoners, known as Mandela Rules, adopted by the United Nations in 2015. One wonders how, in the current situation of the prisons, we apply, well, how we apply the COVID protocol with regards to social distancing. However, concerns have been raised about the practicability of this Section 12, Subsection 8 which empowers the state controller of prisoner or correctional services to reject additional inmates when the facility under his watch is full. The question is, is he going to send the inmates away? Is he going to release the inmates to go home even when they have been convicted of crime that is not healthy for the society? The way forward, Mr. Speaker, that is proposed by this bill is that we need to build more prisons. Achieving the total reform of the reformatory institution in the country would never be possible, except the nation takes a deliberate and bold step towards building more reformatory centers. And this can only be achieved by encouraging these federating units to be part of the establishment and running of... Sorry, we have a system breakdown. Is Mohammed there? Mohammed. We'll continue. Continue until it is fixed.
especially when we consider the health uh, condition of the prisoners who have the right, constitutional right, to enjoy proper health. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think it's matter is pretty straightforward. It's a question of moving. Any oppos anybody opposing the bill? You are against the bill. You are not for federalism. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am Uzoma Nkem Abonta from Abia State. Mr. Speaker, I beg to differ a little with the bill presented by my brother, ben Benjamin Carlo of Abia State also. And in making my difference, I will use our common state, Abia, we are brought rather to fair example. I agree that the word correctional should replace prison as we have migrated that effect. Now transferring prisons from the list why it is now that it's exclusive to concurrent is very potent. It's large. It's huge. Unimaginable in the circumstance of Nigeria now. But like I always argue with the speaker that all bills and constitutional amendments should see the committee for the larger people to contribute. But I will want to highlight certain issues with the speaker. He quoted copiously about America, Australia, and so on. Where even individuals run prison or run correctional service, not even states. Why individuals do that? Should we have a prison now, my brother, in Abia State, used by Abia State government or your local government? But once you move it, local can also do prisons. Who feeds? Who runs the security outfit? Who maintains? Who employs the correctional services officers? And all what not. I will agree that the committee gets it. But we must be able to define issues than just saying transfer. We may all, some of us who disagree, may end in local government prisons or state prison. Even when you commit a federal crime or so, you are probably sent there, you may not be fed because a state or local government sits where you are, for example. If history is anything to go by, what happened in the past, you will see how persons were dumped in prison. Therefore, my contention is the committee must be very specific in saying prisons that are done by states, this is to the extent they will be. Mr. Speaker, are you suggesting in the new federalism that the states, in the name of federalism, the states should open a build a prison, run it? How would they accept inmates? From where? Inmates brought by state government or federal crime? No division of crime, state against how? These are the areas I want us to. But as for phrasing, I stand for true 
federalism, both physical, everything about federalism, we must begin. We better not shy away from attempting it. But we must define it conclusively. So we don't leave an air gap. So we don't create more problems trying to solve a problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Arulila. I'm Linda Chubai Biazo, member representing on Nation Nord and South Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I, I'm opposed to some of the aspects of uh, this bill. Yes, I do support that it will be sent to um, the Committee on Constitutional Review. But, and you did ask a question if I was against fe uh, federalism. Well, I support, uh, my support for federalism is qualified. Because at all times, we must do something that will work in our environment, our society. It's not always good to do copy and paste because something works in um, A that it will work in B. It doesn't work that way. Yes, in America, which you, get, you cited as, as an example, there are uh, correctional um, institution, uh, institutions that are manned by private citizens. But will they really work in Nigeria? We have a democratic government, Mr. Speaker. What we have not been able to achieve in all those years is to have a democratic system. We don't have a democratic system. It's only when you have a democratic system that all these ideals can begin to work. Sure, we can start working towards it. But we don't have to take a leap. Saying that individuals should take care of prisons in Nigeria, I'm not sure we are really ready for that. What about the personnel? Who's going to provide the personnel? We also don't want a situation where people will suffer, will starve. And the, the flip side of it, we also don't want a situation where we're going to have a, a holiday camps, where we're going to have holiday camps as prisons. We also don't want to have that. Because for some reason, because we don't have the system, democratic system in place, this, I don't, I don't believe, will work. But if it goes to the committee, then, of course, we have a lot of people in the committee that will bring different ideas, because nobody has monopoly of, uh, of knowledge, that will bring different ideas to see if there are aspects of it, can, it can, uh, that can work now, or if we are not right for it right now. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Dan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Um, I want to speak from experience. Experience in the fact that I was deputy chairman of Interior some time ago in the 7th Assembly. And one of the things that we actually agreed was workable in our democracy and our client was more of a PPP model. But the issue of removing it completely from the exclusive to the concurrent, there are going to be a lot of issues because even as it is right now, we know that in other areas where the constitution is very clear on issues, even on funding, let's say the funding of the local government itself, we know what, what is going on, how the states are holding firm to the constitutional provision that gives them power to run joint account and all that, and the abuse that is going on there. Mr. Speaker, I think that um, as good as I would join others to agree that it should go to the committee level, but it will be more useful for us not to adopt things that we think is working when we've not been there. We went to Blue Fentine. There's a place called Blue Fentine in South Africa where we actually saw a practical PPP arrangement. The prison was built, yes, by the states, but the running of the prison was more like done by a private security company. But the federal government of South Africa was the one that is directly in charge of who goes there and just like defining which kind of criminals or which kind of uh, people who have been you know, have gone through their legal process should be detained or serve their time. So I think that the best approach in this would actually be more of a PPP arrangement. 
than completely just giving the powers to the states or local government to establish prisons and run the prisons themselves. It's not going to work. It's going to be a punitive, uh, it's going to be used wrongly, as we've seen it, and we've seen the abuse in other areas in our politics. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you. I think we're all agreed in principle that under the principle of federalism, we need to shrink the size of government and devolve powers. We also all agree that there's a serious problem with congestion of prisons. We also all agreed that there's a difference between state offenses and federal offenses. We also all agreed on so many things, but I'm not sure if I wasn't listening, maybe I wasn't listening attentively. Honorable Kalu, were you talking about privatization or were you talking about moving from federal to state? Were you talking about privatizing? Concurrently. Okay, I just wanted to, to, to clarify. Arugagdi, we'll take Arugagdi and then we'll move on. Honorable members, my name is Yusuf Dagdi. I represent Paishinkanke, Kanan Federal Constituency. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Plateau State. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I think with all my energy, I support the passage of this bill into second reading. Reason being that if you look at the prison sector very well in Nigeria, Mr. Speaker, the prisoners are human beings. And it seems the management of the prison by the federal government, federal government is being overwhelmed. And the only way that prison congestion will become a reality is decentralizing the control over the prison sector by allowing state government to, to, to establish, expand, and equally take control of prison activities in Nigeria. And that will go a long way, Mr. Speaker, in making some spaces and respecting the fundamental human rights of those prisoners who should expect some basic social amenities, even within the prison environment. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, I am of the opinion that since it is not privatization or making private individual control that sensitive sector, it is only removing it from the exclusive list and from the concurrent list and making the state government make legislation that will aim at organizing and controlling the activities of presence prison sector. I support in totality that this bill is up and it should be allowed to pass second reading, Mr. Speaker. Well, thank you. I want to encourage as many members as possible to visit and inspect prisons as they are in Nigeria today. I have on a couple of occasions. Uh, you'll be shocked what you find there. Uh, prisons are meant to be correctional and, uh, and punitive to an extent. Um, but where prisons are a place for even breeding or hardening criminals, basically simply because of the atmosphere or where they live, I think we will be losing, uh, uh, we'll be missing the point. When you go into prison and when you come out, you're even more hardened than you are simply because of the circumstances. Uh, so we'll just... Uh, Honorable, we said Honorable Gagdi was the last, but I know Honorable Jaha has been insistent and insisting and insisting. So, time is fast spent. We'll just do Honorable Jaha two minutes so that we can put the question. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, Ame Jaha is my name. I represent the amiable people of Chibok, Dambua, and Goza Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, my area of concern here is particularly now that we are in COVID period, where you have a prison capacity of 100 inmates housing more than 1,000 inmates. We should understand that there is no way they can be free from this kind of uh, epidemic. Another thing, sir, we are not saying that there is going to be complete movement. Ben Kalu, and we that are supporters of this motion are not saying that there will be completely movement of prison services from federal to state. What we are saying is should be on the concurrent list where there will be power sharing. In other words, responsibility sharing between the federal and the state. Another thing, 
you realize that in our prisons, unlike other developing or sorry, developed countries of the world, prisoners are sent to prisons based on the gravity of their offense. You cannot just simply because I made a mistake and stole a cow and you took me with you, you match me with hardened criminals that are armed robbers, kidnappers, or Boko Haram members in the same prison. So how do you reform me? How do you correct my attitude? So as far as I'm concerned, we are calling on our colleagues to understand the reason why we said state government also should participate so that we have, at the end of the day, a decongested prison services, a reliable prison services, and a decent prison services, because only God knows tomorrow who, who is going to be there. So as far as I'm concerned, we are not praying, but as far as I'm concerned, sir, this is a very nice bill, and it should uh, attract the support of our honorable colleagues across line. Thank you. Those in support, please say aye. Let's get to say nay. Aye, sir. Uh, clap. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to alter the second schedule to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to remove prison from the exclusive list, provide for establishment of correctional centers in the concurrent list, and for related matters. Second reading. All right, the bill is referred to the committee. I think there's a no. It's a constitutional matter, so it is referred to the ad hoc committee on um, constitutional review. The fourth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill for an act to repeal section 40 of the Nigerian Correctional Services Act 2019 and provide for establishment of the parole regime, the eligibility of the consideration of parole in relation to persons serving life sentences for murder, the establishment and composition of the parole board and for related matters standing in the name of Honorable Hassan Nalaraba. Honourable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 17th March 2020. I now invite Honourable Nalarba to move that the bill be read a second time. My name is Abubakar Hassan Nalarba. I represent the good people of Awego, Magdana, federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, I am from Nasara State. I stand to move a bill of an act to repeal Section 40 of the Nigerian Correctional Service Act 2019 and provide for the establishment of parole regime, the eligibility for the consideration of parole in relation to persons serving life sentence for murder, the establishment and composition of the parole board for related matters. I do urge this sober house to allow this bill to go for second reading. I so move. Yeah, any second half? Honorable Harry. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Henry Waoba, I speak for the enterprising people of the Tobi Kedulu Federal Constituency. I rise to second the motion. Every move, I so second. Honorable do you want to add some flesh? Is it straightforward? Should I put the question? Or is there something you want to say? Put the question. Those who support, please say aye. Aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, 
Linda, you want to oppose that one too? It's avoided. Okay, what, what was the observation anyway? Although that won't change anything, we've already... Why did you just put only murder? Although it says it says related matters, but anyway, why is it only just murder? Sir, it covers related matters of murder and other death sentences. Okay. I think at the end of the day, at the committee level, they'll uh, sort that out. Yeah, Clark, go ahead. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to repeal Section 40 of the Nigerian Correctional Service Act 2019 and provide for establishment of parole regime, the eligibility for the consideration of parole in relation to persons serving life sentences for murder, the establishment and composition of the parole board, and for related matters. Second reading. I'll to refer to the committee on the uh, interior. The fifth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill for an act to alter the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 1999 has amended to, amongst other things, transfer the subject matter of minimum wage prescription from the exclusive legislative list is set out set out under part one of this second schedule to the concurrent legislative list set out under part two of the second schedule and for related matters standing in the name of honorable garba dati mohammed honorable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on tuesday 14 july 2020 and i invite honorable mohammed to move that the bill be read a second time Honorable Speaker, my distinguished colleagues, I'm Honorable Garbajati Muhammad. I represent Saban Gadi Federal Constituency of Kaduna State. I rise to move for a bill for an act to alter the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, to, amongst others, transfer the subject matter of minimum wage prescription from the exclusive legislative list set out under part one of the second schedule to the concurrent legislative list set out under part two of, uh, of the second schedule and for related matters. Uh, for second reading, I urge my colleagues to allow this bill to pass for the second reading. I so move, Mr. Speaker.
Ah non, ça colle. Ok. I want to gladly support that this bill be Honorable done Kofi, for please, the... Honorable can you clear that? Mr. Speaker, are we protected? Honorable colleagues, please, can you clear I that? I support the reading of the second, uh, second reading of the bill, seeing the way the nation is now. I so support. Thank you. Move by Honorable Dati, seconded by Honorable Abonta. Honorable Dati, you want to add some flesh on this for two minutes? Okay, uh, right Honorable Speaker, my distinguished colleagues, uh, this bill is just like similar bill that was earlier passed on the movement of uh, item from the exclusive legislative list to concurrent, particularly now that the clamor and agitation for true federalism and devolving power from the center to the federal units. Uh, Mr. Speaker, item 34 of the exclusive legislative list places the subject of prescribing the national minimum wage within the exclusive legislative competence of the National Assembly by virtue of section 4, subsection 2 of the Constitution, subsection 2 and 3 of the Constitution. Every attempt in the past to impose minimum wage has always been controversial. Mr. Speaker, we had minimum wage of 18,000. Some states up to this moment were unable to pay. Then, the minimum wage was moved to 30,000, which was vehemently opposed by most state governments because they cannot do it. But the labor continue to press for minimum wage and see it as a culmination of collective bargaining. Mr. Speaker, there does not appear any propriety in the federal government imposing the national minimum wage when the resources available to the federal government are at variance with those available to the state government or each state. The resources available to each state differs, differ, and while some states may be able to afford the national minimum wage, others cannot, especially states like Lagos. Uh, Mr. Speaker, even within the states, you find out that the local governments are not the same. Some can afford it, some cannot. Yes, particularly look when you go to places that look surulere, they can even pay more than the national minimum wage. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's based on this. Uh, it was alleged, even by the Ebony State Government, that every month, at least, uh, the local government needs about one billion naira to service the salaries of their staff. And even some states allege that 100, they use 100% of their allocation to pay for minimum wage. Under the Independence and 1963 Constitution, prescription of minimum wage was a concurrent matter to be legislated by both federal parliament and the regional parliament. A decentralized minimum wage is justifiable on the basis of several socio-economic variables, particularly e.g. local peculiarities, differences in the cost of food, the cost of transportation, the cost of children's school uh, education, the cost of health services, uh, rent, cost of housing, all these variables vary from place to place and from state to state. These are usually the factors that determine what is appropriate as minimum wage. As Chief Afe Babalola a former legal luminary and a huge advocate of proposed decentralization, notes what will pay rent in FCT may purchase valuable property in some other parts of the Federation. 
Mr. Speaker, even the United States of America, where we copied our system, the issue of minimum wage is within the concurrent uh, list. As of 1918, uh, 2018, 29 states out of the 50 states of America pays even higher than what the federal government is paying. To address one critical concern, this decentralization of the prescription of minimum wage does not shut the door on labor from negotiating. What it means is that labor will have to negotiate with each state to ensure that minimum wage in each state is reasonable in the circumstances of that state. Labor already has experience of this as usually in the aftermath of every minimum wage review, it has to engage in protracted negotiations with individual states over consequential wage adjustment, among others. This proposal is actually the most egalitarian thing to do because otherwise the side item 34 actually empowers this National Assembly to stipulate different minimum wages for different parts of the country. It empowers the National Assembly to prescribe a minimum wage for the Federation or any part thereof. But it will be an arbitrary and cumbersome, being a bit far removed from the states, for, the, for this National Assembly to impose these differentials when it can be done by various states. The proposed alteration, Mr. Speaker, to the Constitution will inch us closer to true federalism by devolving power from the overboarding center to the components. Uh, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, this is an opportunity to resolve the controversies that attend the determination of minimum, uh, national minimum wage once and for all, as well as it is another step towards devolution of power and true federalism. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Ifai Mama, do you want to add to this? Honorable Ifai Mama, what, what do you think about this? Uh, go ahead. Honorable Ifai Mama, your contribution. Take your seat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, the bill, indeed, to alter the aspect of the Constitution as it has to do with the minimum wage prescription. It's, it's actually a good idea because by the time it divulges to the concurrent list, both the federal government and the state assemblies can be able to legislate on that, which actually propels the um, the goodwill of the workers. So that's my perception on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Mama, for that very deep, profound contribution. Very, very deep. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, colleagues, my name is Ahmed Davis. I represent OASA, a very constant practice state, Mr. Speaker, the Speaker colleagues. I so much respect my brother, my leader, but I think this very bill is anti people. It's anti masses, and I believe this it should not be allowed to pass through, Mr. Speaker. One, we should be abdicating for our society as stipulated in the Constitution. And I will refer you to Section 17, uh, 3, uh, the social objectives. Uh, as it in the Constitution, it says all citizens without discrimination or any group of whatsoever have the opportunity for ensuring adequate means of livelihood. Adequate means of livelihood. And you say you allow that one to go, I, you, 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 we have a lot of things. I, I, I was in the label uh, and I believe my, my position in the union, I know what we have seen. I, I know what is going to happen by the time you say you have this one devoted back to the state. 
I can assure you, most Nigerians will go impoverished at the detriment of some of the governors. I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, with that fear of contradiction, that among the objective of the welfare of our citizens is very important. And I think, as far as the economy of this country is concerned, we are not yet there to allow states to go and determine. Some will tell you what is the percentage, which is true, what is the percentage, but then workforce in Nigeria and minimum wage should, should be allowed as it is in the Constitution, based on this particular provision I've, I've quoted to you, sir. It is very important. I, I want to urge and beg my colleagues to listen with, uh, with, with the out people out there. The majority, which even where you are sure of what is being done, that the state have the indices to pay, they will not pay. Mr. Speaker, I think this is anti -masses. Thank you very much. So now we have a problem, Deputy Speaker. Because the, the Hadid Pass is coming to your committee. And now we know what the Deputy Speaker's uh, position is. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue with the debate. Uh, no, not yet. That will be at the end. Uh, Bonta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Uzoman Kim Abonta. Mr. Speaker, the bill under consideration, I may go to say, is one of the finest bills we've considered in the Ninth Assembly, or we are considering the Ninth Assembly, considering the nature of Nigeria and the great need for devolution and true federalism. Mr. Speaker, Breakfast also tell that, our opine that. Minimum wage as enshrined in our constitution now is evil, is delimiting, is frustrating, is prohibitive. I'll give you an example. The rent in Abuja is not the same thing with rent in Abia State where I come from. Mr. Speaker, the rent in Ikeja differs from the rent in Gwagwalada. Therefore, Coming to collectively take a wage of people who work under different situations, different environment, is hazardous. Mr. Speaker, we will always talk about America and copy all the evils and paste in Nigeria and not copy the good things. Mr. Speaker, no, not the COVID, sir. Or Trump. Mr. Speaker, we all know America. The New Yorkers, different from the Chicago's, different from the Maryland, and all what not. Every man according to your capacity and ability. But in Nigeria here, somebody who works in Lantan may not be paid with the same person who works in Asoko. I will give you statistics, Mr. Speaker. A room in jobs is not more than 100,000 a year. A room in Asokoro is about 750. Now you bring the two persons and you say because of minimum wage, you pay the Asokoro man 30,000 naira, you pay the Lantan man 30,000 naira. The percent of the bill went trans to specify why states will be able to fix pay according to what they can do. And mindful of what the deputy speaker argued, some will use it negatively to say some governors will be mischievous with it. That's the fear of the uh, deputy speaker. But in doing it, there will also be a central valve subject to existing labor laws, subject to other things. They will not be given wide liberty to say because we are post it, we are going to pay. 10,000. No. We will look for a way, Mr. Deputy Excellency, to put a clause, to put a vow to see that it is not negatively used. But as to whether states should pay according to their ability, we shall allow them. He gave an example about Lagos states. We all know that Lagos is moving, is working. That any governor who hides under minimum wage in Lagos to pay 30,000 will be assumed to be wicked. We all know that as a fact. 
We well, know the fact that some states are quite bomb. Name them. Of course, we we'll see their uh, uh, allocations they get every month. States here, let us not pretend that all the states are equal. They are not equal. So, in true federalism, we should encourage people to put in their best. We should encourage people. There's no one can grow. There's no one can encourage uh, 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 good works without paying them well. Therefore, I beg my colleagues, I want to beg especially our deputy who's going to head the committee that this is one of the things that we can do to free Nigeria. I therefore support this bill in its entirety that not just minimum wage, labor issues should be moved to some current list where everybody will have the opportunity to discuss labor, not just minimum wage. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, right honorable speaker, honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, laws are made to be obeyed and not to be breached. It has come to a stage where we make laws as a Federal Republic of Nigeria, and most of the times, because of our inadequacies, Sometimes, because of lack of funds, we know the right position of the law, but we see ourselves not obeying the law that we have made to, for the good governance of our nation. And so, one thing this bill is going to kill, if eventually the Constitution is amended, is to the extent that states will be paying minimum wage that they can pay according to their resources. Mr. Speaker, a chairman, His Excellency, our Deputy Speaker and Chairman of the Adult Committee, alluded to 17.3 about social status. When you take the geographical expression of a state, the minimum wage you determine is based on that geographical expression. It is not based on beyond that geographical expression. And like other speakers have said, standard of living, cost of living differs from one point to the other. And there is no government, be it at federal level, be it at state level, that has the capacity, has the resources that we want, will not want to provide what will make sense and meaning to our citizens. Most of the times, we are not able to get it right because government itself is in need. You have inadequate resources. And so even when the next person is saying the right thing you should do, because you cannot comply with what they are asking for, you tend to cut corners. And so, Mr. Speaker, the issue of devolution of power is now. And all this leads to curing that request, demand, agitation for devolution of power. And so we should allow it. Mr. Speaker, if you go to where I come from, oil producing areas, every item on sale there is very, very expensive. Very, very. Sometimes, I tell my constituents, how do you pay this rent when you don't have industries here? Government is the only uh, salary paying agency. There is no other business there that people do to earn money. But because it is an oil producing state, the rent is very, very exorbitant. Cost of living is very, very high. Prices of goods and services are very, very expensive. But what will the people do? Mr. Speaker, I think that this bill needs to pass a second reading and be transmitted to the Constitutional Committee on Constitutional Amendment. My urge is that at every level, Nigeria needs this bill and we should all rise to support it to ensure that we reduce rancor and labor acrimony between government and labor and other employees. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Benson. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for yielding the floor to me. Honorable colleagues, I remain Baba Jimmy Benson. I represent the good people of Ikorodu Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, this bill cannot have come at a better time. It is a bill that gives freedom to governments to, de to determine the wage bill of their individual staff. Mr. Speaker, where we borrowed our uh, federal system from the United States of America allows each state to determine how much it pays its civil servants. Mr. Speaker, to add this to this, the governor of California does not earn the same amount as the governor of Arkansas. So I believe that in Nigeria, each state should determine how much it wants to pay its civil servants or public servants. Mr. Speaker, I don't believe the governor of Lagos State should earn the same amount as well as the governor of Zamfara. Or the governor of Kano State should earn the same as the governor of Yobe. Or the local government chairman in a particular area should earn the same. The local government chairman in Surulere, for instance, should earn the same amount or salary as the as local government chairman of Gibia. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I support this bill with all force. And I hope that a delegation will be sent to the Labour Congress, who I'm sure will do their best to oppose this bill. I so support, I so support the bill, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Sada. Mr. Speaker, my name is Honorable Sada Soli Jibia, representing Jibia Kaita Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, this bill is very progressive, is dynamic, and is contemporary with what exists in the world economy. Every jurisdiction should determine what it can pay to its workers. Look at what is happening now on the on the Capitol Hill, the U.S. Congress, the president campaigned on the fact that he wants to increase the minimum wage of federal workers $15. He's not talking about uh, what the states can pay. I think here, if Nasarawa state should come to the federal allocation and collect money, which is not the same with the river state, I think the national salary and wages Commission should not determine how much an SRR state should, should pay its, its workers because they don't earn the same money. So I think this will liberalize the economies of the states, will, uh, will also organize them and will put them in a correct perspective on how they can manage their finances, on how much they can pay. And then also, it will also strengthen the federal system we have here because somebody from Katsina who has first class in biology can be recruited in River State to go and teach because they have higher pay there. So it will strengthen how we live, how we coexist, and then the, sh the sharing of the intellect that we'll have. So it is very dynamic. It's a welcome idea if we allow these things to go through. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Dan Aguru. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to draw attention of my respected leader, the Deputy Speaker, that this bill will help you when you take the mantle of leadership in Plateau State, when it is fast. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Honorable colleagues, my name is Munir Babada Nagundi. I represent Kumbo, the Federal Consulancy of Kano State. This bill is timely. What, uh, what is happening in this country, Mr. Speaker? If you look at the total wages and salaries from states to local governments to the federal, what we spend on salaries and wages 
compared with the population of Nigeria, you know it is not going to be sustainable. It will not going to be sustainable. And that is why we are ending up in crisis. Because after paying salaries and wages, nothing goes to the common man. I can give you an example. Recently, last two, two months, Gombe State had local government election. And the governor said each local government should stand on its own. And out of the seven local governments, only four are able to pay salaries. What they normally do, they put everything in, a, in one basket and share to them. But the governor said each one will stand on its own. So now, with this issue of minimum wage, about three or four, they will not be able to pay. It's either they will continue to get loan from the banks and continue to pay the salary. So it is important that we have to be pragmatic on this. And it's important that we should do the needful. Thank you. Honorable Zodo. Benjamin Ben Zondo, I speak for the people of Makudi Goma. I also speak for the teaming unemployed youth in this hallowed chamber. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, there can never be a better time for such a piece of legislation. Mr. Speaker, your mantra has been join tax. That is the only way we can build this nation. And the only way we can build an egalitarian society is to allow everybody decide for how much... Honorable Cornelius and Honorable Linda, maintain social distance, please. Maintain social distance. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the only way... A I'm even very surprised at Honorable Linda. She's the most careful person in this house. Yes, I wonder why. Continue, Honorable Zodo, sorry. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. The only way... We can build a just society is to allow this legislation pass through. I lend my voice to this very wonderful legislation, which will be one of the best this House has passed in the Ninth Assembly. Right, Honorable Speaker, if you look at it, most of our local loans collected by state are used to pay wages. And this is because what they get from the Federation account in most instances cannot even pay the wages of these states because of it has been decided at the center how much they should pay. And I also beg to say, Nigerian Labor Congress has every state has a chapter. And what that chapter is meant to do is to negotiate and to also cater for the welfare of workers in that particular state. And as such, these state chapters can also negotiate how much each state can be able to pay. Take, for instance, a state that gets less than three, four billion amount, and their wage bill is about four, five billion. In most instances, workers are owed arises, accumulating to billions of naira that can never be paid. This bill can never be anti-people, it can never be anti-masses, it is meant to create a just, and an egalitarian society where it will be free for all to determine how much each worker can be paid. I give you an instance in my state, because of the paucity of funds, workers are allowed to go farm on Thursdays and Friday to augment whatsoever government can pay. And this is accepted by the labor chapter in the state. I please beg you, honorable colleagues, to allow this bill passed, as this bill will stand us out has been one of the best piece of legislation. Thank you for listening. Honorable Sununu, the mics have gone off again. Please, can you get them to fix the mics? I have to speak loud. Deep 
protection to a worker, around which there is a certain amount that nobody should pay, should pay a wage below that. So as we have a security, I quite agree with the deputy speaker and his line of argument. If the minimum wage is not uh, in our laws, I am sure state a lot of governments and local governments will decide to pay what cannot even pay a neighbor bill of a family. And then that is when we will now see that we are putting ourselves in a serious consequences. So this protective effect, uh, the, protest, the protective effect of the minimum wage should be looked into rather than what uh, restrictive nature of it. For me, it is not restrictive because it doesn't say that you cannot pay above this, but it only says you cannot pay below this. And it's based on calculation on what an average family may require. As it is, even the 30,000 minimum wage is not able to service the need of a family of husband, wife, and a child. 70% of our healthcare delivery purchases is out of pocket. Uh, social welfare package is virtually non-existent. We have a lot of our issues and crises within the country. The economy is going down. So by the time we allowed individual workers to be paid, anything below 10,000, for example, I don't think that can even serve to pay the school. The, the, the major issues that will be affected is the education of the child, which is very, very vital. Because the little that one is saving out of minimum wage to pay for school fees will not be there. I think what we should try as much as possible is to encourage universal applicability of minimum wage and also suggest to the state government and local government on areas they can diversify in getting more revenues. And most importantly, and I repeat most importantly, most importantly is to, get, is to block leakages. There are a lot of leakages within the system. So the leakages is not allowing the enough money to be there for minimum wage to be uh, universally applica uh, uh, applied. So what is most uh, this is for us to look at the way we can prefer to ensure that leakages is blocked within the system. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are you speaking for or against? I'm speaking against. Okay, good. Um, sorry, my system has gone down. Uh, Honorable Kiruka, you have to speak with your... Okay, it's working. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am Kiruka Oyejocha. I represent the good people of the support to Mundo, the federal constituency and from my state. Mr. Speaker and our colleagues, a lot, a lot has been said about this bill, but one thing that is very clear here is one question I want to ask. Are we saying that 30,000 Naira is enough in even the remotest village in this country? That is 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Because the concern here is not about this bill. This bill is a very good bill. People should negotiate. But if you are sincere to negotiate based on what you have, because the same governors that we are now, the same states we are saying, oh, they should go into negotiation with. And those people that we gave ballot fund, they didn't pay salaries. Paris fund, they didn't pay uh, uh, wages. And so the truth here is that we should also be feeling what Nigerians are feeling. Yes, minimum wage, some people are saying, oh, we should review so that states will pay according to what they can. The question is, these ones that have refused to pay 30,000 as we speak, true, true, is it true that they cannot pay this 30,000 miles? That's the big question. And of course you know that they can afford to pay security votes for themselves. And in those states, ask the police commissioner, ask the director of DSS. They're not giving them anything. They're not paying salaries. So we must be sincere to whatever we discuss here, that you're dealing with people who have reprobate mind that they don't want to do anything to help anybody. So if you say, okay, let us go there and let them say or discuss what they want to pay. The danger is that they may end up not paying anything. So we should not lose sight of the people we are dealing with. All of us are involved. We should be able to re address our minds. Because the problem we have is even the problem of mindset. We just believe in everything they say. It's true. But you know it's not true. Here, 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 we approve funds. They don't spend it for whatever you approve it for. Yeah. So my position is that we allow this bill to pass the second review. But we should put a caveat 
that no state in this country will be allowed to pay less than 30,000 because it's not going to work. 30,000 cannot pay house rent. 30,000 cannot uh, feed a child. 30,000 cannot take care of people who are pregnant and all that. So let the bill pass, but let us not subject our faith to people who will reduce this 30,000 minimum wage. Because if they can afford their security votes, if they can afford the fleet of cars, if they can afford travels overseas and all that, then why can't they pay 30,000 minimum wage? Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Bangida. Sorry, Honorable Bangida. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Babangida Ibrahim. I'm representing Malum Fashi, Kafur Federal Constituency, I'm from Kassana State. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I rise in support of this bill. My understanding of the sponsor of this bill is that the fundamental question we should ask ourselves the minimum wage from the beginning was not intended to be applied at the federal level. It was intended to be applied at the state and local government level. Why? Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, as it is today, there's nobody at the federal level that is receiving a salary of 30,000 Naira. Nobody. And not because of the minimum wage, but because of the rationalization of civil service students of Basanji era. There's no level one, level two, level three. So nobody at the federal level is receiving 30,000 Naira. So if actually we want to be honest to ourselves, why don't we take the minimum of federal government and apply it across the seats and the local governments? As it is today, Mr. Speaker, the federal government, the state government, and the local government are applying federal salary structure. But that has to do with the basic salary alone. What happened to allowances? The allowances are discriminatory. Every state pays its own allowance. As it is today, Mr. Speaker, a fresh graduate at the state level salary is about 40,000, 50,000 Naira. At the federal level, a fresh graduate is receiving between 80 and 100,000 Naira. So if you cannot balance at the top, why should you balance at the down? If we apply minimum wage, we should take a percentage of the salary of each to apply it as the basis of minimum wage. So I want to support this bill, Mr. Speaker. Let each chair of government determine what it is minimum wage according to its ability, according to its workforce, according to its resources, because laws are meant to be implemented. Since the beginning of the discussion about the minimum wage, how many states in the Federation are actually implementing minimum wage? Is there any extra fund from the federal government to the states for the implementation of minimum wage? Is there any consequences for not implementing the minimum wage? Why are we wasting our time? So I think it is better to put it in a concurrent list. What the sponsor of this bill is saying, the federal government can determine, the state can determine, and the local government can determine. If we can sit at the federal level and determine minimum wage for states and local government, then what is going to be the contribution of the federal government to the state and the local government? How are they going to support them? Are they going to discuss only on the issue of determination of the minimum wage? So we should tell ourselves the truth. Let us go back to the basics. We cannot discriminate at the top and equate at the bottom. It's not possible. So, Mr. Speaker, our colleagues, let us support this piece. Let us allow minimum wage to go into the concurrent list of our constitution. Thank you. Namdas. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Abrazak Namdas. I represent the good people of Ganye, Chada, Tongo, Mayo, Belwa. I am from Adama State. Mr. Speaker, I'm very cautious on this bill. Why I'm saying this is that, Mr. Speaker, when this present government came into being, you could recall vividly that the president has to use his initiative to assist states with certain resources before they are able to pay, even when the law is there. The law is there, but there are a lot of states that could not be able to pay salaries for even up to nine months. It's on record, Mr. Speaker. And if you allow every state to negotiate, even to negotiate their, uh, their minimum wage, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, 
very vividly, practically, you find some states will even argue that they can only pay 15,000 naira. That would be a very terrible decision to make. Even with the law telling us to pay 30,000, there are governors who came and said, look, I am going to pay beyond 30,000 because they wanted to be elected into office. When they got elected finally, they couldn't even pay the minimum wage. It became a subject of war. So we have to protect the vulnerable. We have to protect the people at the lower. I agree with people who say that the salaries at the federal level is different. I agree. But Mr. Speaker, I must tell you, even in states, you are at liberty to pay, even with the law saying that you should pay a minimum of 30,000. You are even at liberty to pay 40,000 if you have the capacity. Nobody is saying you, should, you must maintain 30,000. Mr. Speaker, you come from Lagos State. I'm not sure that what is being paid in, as minimum wage is 30,000 in Lagos because they have the capacity to pay more. If there are states that have the capacity to pay 50,000, let them pay. Nobody will say we will be clapping for them. But Mr. Speaker, if you allow states to pay on their own, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, we will come here with another bill urging states to state aside. So I want to be us to be cautious. Let us be sure that we are going to maintain this. And then finally, Mr. Speaker, when people say at the federal level that this, this, this uh, salaries are different, Mr. Speaker, even at the, salary, at the federal level, the salary at the ministry is different from the one in some of the uh, agencies. If you ask some, uh, some applicants, they will not even take employment in the ministry. They prefer to go to agency because it's even more higher. So let us not say we should argue that it will be the same. This is my observation, Mr. Speaker. Chairman of Education. I am from Kano State. And my name is Comrade. Comrade. Aminu Suleiman. I represent Pegi Federal Constituency. I bought no, capital no, to this bill. And I'm so surprised on the volume of support that the bill has so far received. Even though somebody joked with me to say those who supported are those aspiring to leave the legislative and to assume the driving seat. I wish them the best of luck. But this bill for me is an incentive to assist states that have no progressive mind to continue to undermine workers. The concept of the collective bargaining is to set the minimum base. So even Babangida's argument for me can be taught to say it's positive. He is not opposing the bill as far as my reading of his perspective are concerned. States that are unable to pay is not because of inability. It is because of refusing to prioritize. States that a civil service, for instance, will begin to initiate white elephant project, building airport, for only a state that is civil. When are they going to use the aircraft? On Saturday only or on Sunday? And they will go and build airport of 50, 60 million US. Why should we go into this? The intention of collective bargaining at the national, like I said, is to set parameters beyond which no state or no individual should go under. Between the minimum and the maximum, employers can navigate. But if we give a free hand in this Nigeria, that even when there is restriction, governors go about Unfortunately, I've mentioned governors. Government goes about doing whatever they want. Mr. Speaker will be giving them license to hide under the law of ability to say, I am sending the workers for a three month vacation to work without salary. We will follow this bill to the Constitutional Committee and fight it there if we are unable to get it on the floor. I plead that honorable colleagues should have a receipt and ensure that we have security for the Nigerian workers and to give them the same of and not to give a pre license to people who want to cross over and just to go and pick a minimum wage as they so did. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just honorable. Um,
Dirty, do you still want your right of reply? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity for the right of reply. Uh, first of all, with due respect, His Excellency the Deputy Speaker, this is not anti-people's bill, as you wrongly tag it. Uh, this bill is not based on any form of emotions or sentiments. It's based on facts and realities. Mr. Speaker, what we are saying, uh, nobody is saying that we are shutting the labor out of this negotiation as one of, the, uh, one of my colleagues rightly argued. Every state, NLC has branches all over. And they know, as, as some people have already said, laws are meant to be implemented. The minimum wage of 18,000 that was previously agreed has not been implemented by most states. Then we are now at 30,000. Most states cannot pay, and there is no consequence. And it's a law. No, no consequence for that. What we are saying is each state, according to its own ability, let them negotiate with the level. If the central level will be there to negotiate, they have to put their own minimum wage at state level. The minimum wage can be at state level, as federal level. Even as we are now, as uh, argued by Honorable Babangida, at the federal level, nobody receives uh, 30,000 as minimum wage. But it depends on the capability of each state. The each state will be able to determine its own base salary at the lowest level based on what the state has. So this is the basis of the argument. The labor is not shut out. NLC has the right to negotiate on behalf of every state based on the ability. But the laws we are having, we, we will pass a law of minimum wage and nobody will implement it and there is no consequence. And there is no special fund from the federal government to these states or local government to augment to implement this uh, minimum wage. In most states, uh, some states up to three, four, five months cannot be able to pay this. So it's the practicality of it and the reality we have on ground, not based on any sentiment, based on, based on facts. That's why we, and we, we should be very, very dynamic with the clamor and the agitation every day of devolving power from the center to the federating units. So I therefore urge my other colleagues to support this bill and let it pass. Thank you. This has been a very interesting and robust debate. The question is that the bill is now read a second time. Those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say name. The ayes have it. The clap. You go and uh, you go and meet the you go and meet the deputy speaker and comrade at the committee level. Honourable speaker, honourable members, a bill for an act to alter the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, to among others transfer the subject matter of minimum wage prescription from the exclusive legislative list set out under Part One of the Second Schedule to the concurrent legislative list set out under part two of the second schedule and for related matters second reading okay honorable colleagues there was something i wanted to mention i didn't want to be seen uh, I, finally, uh, if I, I didn't want to be seen as trying to influence the debate now that uh, is referred to ad hoc committee on but we did we think about the unforeseen consequences for instance of um cross-border migration. If, for instance, in, I love the bill. I think the bill is fantastic, but there are some unforeseen consequences. If, for instance, Cardinal State, the bill, the, the minimum wage there 
as fixed by the state is way higher. Do you see a situation where people are moving from Katsina every day in the morning to come and walk in Kaduna and then go back home and, um, and, um, and uh, increase the pressure of the population and the usage of the facilities in, in, in Kaduna? Those are unforeseen consequences. But I think if this bill does pass eventually, there have to be some very important safety valves, concerns that have been raised. I think the state assemblies should be very much involved and so on and so forth. But I think it's a good bill. Um, sixth order of the day is a motion on rescission of the petition by Abore Hawa Omar against Nigeria Police Force on the refusal of the Nigeria Police Force and Sokoro Division to comply with the senior magistrate court order standing in the name of Honorable Abubakar Hassan Fulata. Honorable Fulata is invited to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. I am Abubakar Hassan Fulata. I present Bernila Krika Sama Gudi Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker, from Jigao State. Position of the title of the patient by Abore Hawa Omar against Nigerian Police Force on the refusal of the Nigerian Police Asoko Division to comply with a senior magistrate court order. House is invited to note that on Thursday, 30th May 2019, the recommendation of the Committee of, on Public Petition on the petition by Abore Hawa Omar against the Nigerian Police Force. Marushegu Barabi, you're welcome. On refusal of the Nigerian Police Asokoro Division to comply with a senior magistrate court order in suit number AB stock SMC stock OR 231 stock 2012 was considered and approved. Also note that arising from the consideration of the said report, the House recommended that the United Bank of Africa, UBA, should dialogue with Hawa Abore Omar with a view to determining the rightful entitlement due to her and pay her accordingly. Observes the erroneous use of the title of the petition by Hawa Abore Omar against the Nigerian police force on the refusal of the Nigerian police force, a so-called division, to comply with the senior magistrate court order in suit number AB AMC uh, OR 231 stock 2012 as heading of the petition instead of the petition by Hawa Umar Abore against UBA PLC on the actual denial, malicious and illegal withdrawal withholding of benefits, ill will and bias against the petitioner as the rightful heading. Resolves to rescind its decision on the title of the petition by Hawa Abore Omar against the Nigerian Police Force on the refusal of MPF as so called division to comply with the senior magistrate court order and approve the title of the petition by Hawa Abore Omar against United Bank of Africa, PLC, UBA, on actuated denials, malicious and illegal withholding of benefits, ill will and bias against the petitioner. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Any second? Second. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Engineer Sanibala. I represent Unchi Sanya Federal Constituency from Kano State. I rise to second. The motion has heavily moved by Honorable Pulata. I so second. Okay, those in support of the motion, please say aye. Please say aye. Please say aye. Aye, Engineer Sani Bello, can you please uh, try and see the try and see the leader of the house regarding the National Assembly Service Commission and some of their activities? Please. Be before I forget, this is a reminder notice to remind all members of the minority parties of their meeting today 23rd second uh, to, to, yeah today the 23rd 
The venue will be Transcorp Hilton, time 6 p.m. Signed by the minority leader. Minority leader, you've moved your meeting to Transcorp Hilton? There's plenty of space here in the house. There are very few of you. If I can use one of the small rooms. Yes, of course. My knowledge is that today is your birthday. Today is your birthday, right? And your meeting is today? Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Leader, today is the minority leader's birthday. I think before we close, we'll sing happy birthday for him. They have a meeting at Transcorp. When the minority caucus, and I'm wondering why they're going to come Transcorp. There, there are very small rooms here available for them. <laughs> By the way, Minority Leader, we had a defection from ADC to APC today on the floor, but you weren't here. Yes, yeah, Osai Osai was parambulating and saying things that did not concern him. The usual objection. <laughs> the sixth order of the day. Uh, the seventh? Okay. The seventh order of the day is a motion on extension of time for submission of reports on bills and motions referred to the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services. Standing in the name of Honorable Aminu Suleiman. I remember Aminu Suleiman is invited to move the motion. My name is Comrade Aminu Suleiman. I represent Pagi Federal Constituency. Comrade, tell us something about this title, but you keep saying Comrade Aminu Suleiman. Is it, are you allowed to use the title forever? No, For, forever, it's just like general. So why doesn't the DS use Comrade? Uh, Comrade, he's now, he's now at a level that he chooses to be silent. I'm still struggling. Okay. He has crossed over, Mr. Speaker. You have crossed over. <laughs> okay, come here and continue. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Honorable Speaker, this is a motion for the extension of time for submission of reports on bills and motion referred to the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services. The House recall it recalled that the House at different times debated and repaired bills and motions numbering about 50 to the Committee on Education and Tertiary Educa I mean Services Proposal Legislative Action. Cognizance of the provision of the standing orders of the House of Representatives to discharge committees of such bills and motions after 60 days if the reports are not submitted. Aware that due to paucity of points, the interruption and subsequent suspension of plenary due to lockdown of all activities across the country in year 2020 and part of 21 as a result of COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic, the committee could not hold public and investigative hearings, hence the committee's inability to submit the report within the stipulated period. Not that the committee is making all necessary arrangements to undertake the assignment within, with the little resources at its disposal, compile and submit report on the referrals within eight weeks if the House granted. Resolve to extend the time for the, commission, for the submission of the committee's report by eight weeks to enable the committee to conclude it assignment. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Dan Agudu. Honorable Dan Agudu. From Kano State. Thank you. Second the motion for adjournment. I hereby second the motion is heavily read by my colleague, Honorable Amin Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, 
those who support PCI, those against PCI, I just have it. Huh? Observation. Yes. For extension, under our rules, is two weeks. That was the committee cannot request for eight weeks. They can only do so after the expiration of the two weeks as provided for in their rules, sir. Where, where were you? I was praying, Mr. Speaker, sir. No issues. German, Mr. We are in a conundrum. You are not wearing shoes? <laughs> and you are the custodian of the. You know the rules. I'm properly dressed, Mr. Speaker. You have to be properly dressed. <laughs> I am, sir. People don't come here barefoot. I am, sir. Wear your shoes. Look at, look at my shoes. <laughs> Uh, so your observation is that we can only take two weeks, not, only two weeks, sir. not eight weeks. Not eight weeks, sir. Okay. Under the circumstances, should we rule to suspend our rules? You, we can only abide by the two weeks. Move, I, move for a recession. Yes. So, because Speaker, I've already hit the gavel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've already hit the gavel. Move for okay, a recession. Mr. Speaker, honorable yeah. colleagues, I am Albuquerque Hassan Fulata. I represent Bernie Akrika Hassan Mabuli, Federal Constitution, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do the same its decision on the approval given for the extension of eight weeks to the Committee on Tertiary Institution to submit its reports on, on the referral. On the grounds of? Uh, uh, based on the provisions of our extant rules, which provides that only two weeks extension can be given. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, let somebody second. Yes. Uh, Katsina, second. Colleagues, I am from Kassana State. Amin Ashirman is my name, representing Bindaman. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion heavily moved by Flata, and I so second. Thank you. Thank you. It's important that we observe our rules. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those against, say nay. Ayes have it. Uh, Honorable Suleiman, please move for suspension of the rules and take your motion again. and business, I hereby move for the suspension of our rules, rules take the uh, so that I can take uh, the motion once again. I so move. Any second? Honorable Nara Raba. She opened the abolition of the Guru to Guru Takali. Yeah, you know, you know, you know. I work on my name. I hereby second the motion that will be moved by Comrade Guru. I Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. I have it. Honorable Suleiman, just move the motion without going through it. Just say, as moved previously. Yes. Yes. With eight weeks, but we're suspending. We're not allowing ourselves to take eight weeks based on suspension. Colleagues, very progressive honorable colleagues, that the motion should be approved as moved previously by my humble self. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, honorable incoming, anybody that knows his incoming can rise up and second. <laughs> they, you know yourself. And we find you, Mama. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My name is, by God's grace, incoming honorable. <laughs> if I choose the moment, I speak for the people of Indiana, Federal Constituency, the area of Adnan Brasset. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I rise to second the motion as stably moved by Honorable Comrade Suleiman. I so second. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Those who support, please say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. Ayes have it.
if he Afe, member representing the good people of Okre, Sapele, and Uye Federal Constituency of Delta State, a pure Delta. Mr. Speaker, this is a motion for, for the restatement of Sapele Federal Constituency and two state constituency in Delta State. The House note that Sapele Local Government of Delta State had two state constituency of Sapele Rural and Sapele Urban Constituency, and one federal constituency named federal, Sapele Federal Constituency before the general election in 1999. Specifically, in, 1990, in 1979, 1983, and 1993 elections. Also note that the Sapele Local Government area is the only local government council that suffered abridgment of two state constituency to one state constituency and the scrapping of the federal constituency while other local government of their status migrated from two to three state constituencies. Aware that it's in record that Sapler rural constituency consists of Sapler had the following words Word 1, Word 9, Word 10 and Ward 11. Why Sapler Urban Constituency consists of Sapler? Had Ward 5, Ward 6, Ward 7, and Ward 8. He has also aware of the protest by members of the Sapley Local Government Area to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in year 2004. After looking into the merits of their case presented by the Sapley people, INEC decided that the Sapley Federal Constitution be restated with a memo dated 23rd May 2004. And this decision for restatement was duly communicated to the National Assembly for further legislative actions as prescribed by the 99 Constitution. Worried that that's why the well informed constitutional support communicated by INEC to the National Assembly, which ought to have been given effect by a resolution of the National Assembly in 2007, the National Assembly, either out of oversight or distraction, failed to restate the Supplement Federal Constituency and the two state constituencies. Further aware that the Independent Electoral Commission has organized three successive general elections since the communication to the National Assembly for implementation, yet effect has not be given to the legal and substantiated decision of INEC. Record that the Court of Appeal, Benin Judicial Division, made judicial pronouncement between the Independent National Electoral Commission versus Dr. Lorogu Ebenezer Okorodudu and others, affirming the earlier ruling of the Federal High Court, worry Judicial Division, to which to restate the two state federal cost, uh, state constituency comprising of supply urban and supply rural constituency, as separate and distinct state constituency in line with relevant provisions of the Constitution. Cognizant that the 2003 general election are fast approaching and therefore it is ready to bring to the attention of the House the unimplemented restatement of supply federal constituency and the two state assembly, uh, constituency. Result, the House or the Independent National Commission to recognize the Sapler Federal Constituency and the two state, Sapler two state constituency, Sapler Rural and Sapler Rural, accordingly, and contest us election for Sapler Federal Constituency and the two state constituencies in conformity with the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as 1999 as amended. I hear my move. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mani. I mean, Ashumani is my name, representing Bindamani. Mr. Speaker, I am from Kosovo State. I rise to second the motion, heavily moved by Okakuru of Sapele, and I saw second. Thank you, sir. Honorable Affairs, <laughs> about the of um, two state constituencies. Let's just put the question. Those in favor of PCI, let's get to say name. I have it. Ninth order of the day is motion calling on the federal government to revisit the ban on employment in federal universities. Standing in the name of Honorable Luga Taiwo. Honorable Luga, you move your motion.
Right Honorable Speaker, respected colleagues, I am Representative Taiwo Oluga. I speak for the people of Zero Wale Federal Consortium. Mr. Speaker, I am from Ocean State. I rise this afternoon to move a motion on a call on the federal government to revisit the ban on employment in the federal university. The House notes that the 2020 appropriation bill, the federal government proposed a national budget of 10.59 trillion, but due to the failing in crude oil price and COVID-19 global pandemic, the government was forced to trim down the budget to about 9 trillion. Shift the benchmark on the price Clap. from $57 per barrel to $28 per barrel and ban recruitment into ministries, departments, and agencies, including MDAs. The House also notes that a recent oversight of the Federal University in Nigeria revealed that the institution has an avalanche of internal vacancies for both academic and non-academic position, but because of the ban on the recruitment, the position cannot be filled, thus hampering smooth academic program in the university. The House should take cognizance that the amount appropriated in the 2020 national budget for personnel expenditure in the university can, be, can accommodate the internal vacancy. Hence, the university should be allowed to fill the vacancy, especially where the amount appropriated for the capital expenditure can be offset the, can offset the, atten the attendance per personnel cost. The House resolved to urge the federal government to lift ban on recruitment into the federal university in order to fill the existing vacancy so as not to hamper the smooth running of the academic institution. Two, the House to mandate the Committee on Tertiary, Tertiary Education and Services to ascertain the number of internal vacancies in the federal government university with a view to monitoring their replacement in order to curb inefficiency and waste. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Mm. Honorable Benson, please, second Honorable Lugas. Ah. Why is everybody protesting? Why do you say why Benson? Did you want to second it? Honorable Benzi, please sit down. German, I need. Honorable Aisha, go ahead. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker, the gender friendly speaker. I rise, I'm Honorable Aisha Tibri Duku, Yimbiar Duku, member representing Dukuna for the federal constituency. I come from Gombe State. I rise to second the motion, ably moved by my twin sister. I so second. Okay, instead of going into a debate, Honorable Luca, let me just ask quickly what was the reason for the ban in the first place? And has that changed? Honorable Luca, what was the reason for the ban and has that reason disappeared? Yes, okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, the reason for the ban is still there, but my argument is this. We are, we are not asking for fresh recruitment. What we are asking for is a replacement, manpower replacement, Mr. Speaker, at our tertiary institution, because we find out that uh, uh, there are vacancies over a decade now. In our public institution, Mr. Speaker, some they have gone on a search for green pasture, some nature have taken care of them, and uh, there has been transfer. So what we're saying is that there are spaces, not necessarily new recruitment, 
So the uh, common man out there that has trained his or her child or his ward in the university, they are sitting down at home. They are only telling us, speaking to our ears, that we should speak for them, that we should please appeal to the federal government. If the uh, new recruitment is not done, let them do replacement. It means we are going to absorb more than 10,000. Mr. Speaker, sir, I need to say this. If we take the, uh, uh, the census, we have more than 10,000 openings, and the money is being appropriated yearly for them. The university are returning the money. When we have uh, on, uh, our youth out there that we can replace them with, and I, I think uh, from research, I told the head of service uh, when she came, because one of the committee, uh, public service, I, I, I'm a member, I told her this, and she said that we should speak to, and we should make it known so that this honorable house will look into it that it is necessary, it is germane, it is important, especially at this period in which we are, that we should please do replacement of those officers that they have left. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. Thank you. His honorable his comrade here, Chairman of Education. He's not here. Honorable Benson, do you have a word to add? Honorable Speaker, Honorable colleagues, I concur with her submission, and I think this house should pass a motion with the speed of light. Thank okay. You, Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. The tenth order of the day is a motion on destructive rainstorm at Ora Igumina, Ifeda, your local government. Area of Oshu State, sign name of Honorable Fake, Honorable Lufemi Fake, Honorable Fake is invited to move the motion. Mr. Speaker, see why I'm saying why, Benson. Honorable Oluga and Honorable Benson, please maintain social distance. My name is uh, Femi Fake, and I represent. If I die, when you are drawing the federal constituency of Osun State, and the House notes that on Sunday, 14 February 2021, a rainstorm ravaged or right women and community in the federal local government area of Osun State, affecting a number of public buildings, mostly classroom blocks, which had their roofs blown off, while several residential buildings belonging to the people of Ora Igumina community were equally affected. The house is worried that the rainstorm has displaced a large number of secondary school children as well as other Nigerians, thereby rendering them as internally displaced persons, IDPs, in their natural habitat. As they cannot attend classes or go about their daily chores, thereby causing untold hardship to citizens who urgently need assistance. Therefore, the House resolves to urge the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to, uh, to visit the scene and assess the extent of damage done to public and private buildings. Number two, the House, the house also urges NEMA to thereafter provide emergency relief materials for the affected schools and displaced students and even the citizens. Number three, the House mandates the Committee on Emergency and Disaster Preparedness to ensure compliance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Engineer. The Speaker, Honorable Felix, I rise to second the motion as heavily moved my, by my very good friend and colleague, Honorable Fakai. My name is Honorable Engineer Sanibala, representing Kunchi Sanya Federal Constituency from Kano State.
believe this is a disaster related motion. Yes, a disaster related motion. So I'll put the question. Those in support of the motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, Sammy. 11th order of the day is a motion on need to investigate non compliance with the Environmental Impact Assessment Act in the oil and gas sector for sustainable environment and protection of host communities. Stand in the name of Honorable Johnson Oguma and one other member. Honorable Oguma is invited to move the motion. Honorable Oguma. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I'm Johnson Oguma. My brother. I represent Itako Central, Itako East, Itako West Federal Constituency of Amado State. My motion is on the need to investigate the non-compliance with the Environmental Impact Assessment Act in the oil and gas sector for sustainable environmental and protection of host communities. The House knows that at the 1992 United Nations Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, heads of states and government declare that all member countries should conduct environmental impact assessment, AIE, for major development projects, which inform the enactment of the Environmental Impact Assessment Act in Nigeria. Also aware that the EIE, EIA Act mandates the assessments of proposed projects and activities likely to cause significant damage to the environment and uh, presently, environment and presently, the major national legal framework for ensuring environmental sustainability and covers aspects of all require, covers aspects all required for environmental impact assessment. Consider that operational activity, activities in the oil and gas sector requires drilling, pipelining, building platforms such as stack farms, terminals, flow lines, oil depots, refineries, hydrocarbon, process, hydrocarbon processing facilities, etc. Which sites are abandoned without decommissioning. Also concerned that the non-compliance with EIA Act results in the gross deterioration of Nigeria's environment, thus affecting the lives and property of Nigeria in the host communities. Determined to arrest this unpleasant development from degenerating to, to hurt the culture of impunity and brazen disregards of EIE Environmental Impact Assessment Act by oil and gas companies, they have resolved mandate the committees on environment and host communities to visit the affected oil and gas facilities and host communities to investigate the alleged breaches of the Environmental Impact Assessment Act and report back within eight weeks for further legislative action. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I so move. Okay. Honorable Shu Balarabe, the non compliance of Environmental Impact Assessment Act by the Oil and Gas Company. Honorable Shu Balarabe, can you second that, please? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Shehu Balarabe is my name. I represent Brindungwari Iwa Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I'm from Kaduna State. Arise, discount the motion heavily moved by my senior colleague. I saw scorned. Thank you. Okay, um, just, Honorable can we put the question? Okay, those who support, please say aye. Those against, please say name. Aye, sir. Yeah. The 12th order of the day is consideration of report of the Committee on Police Affairs on the issuance from the Consolidated Revenue. The sum of, okay. Okay. And I don't remember, just allow the leader of the house, he wants to take biscuits, he's feeling dizzy. 
You can Biscuit is hungry. He said he hasn't eaten all day. Thank you. Atta, I represent Bodniwa, Creek and some of the Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker, from the Gulf State. Mr. Speaker, I move that item number 12 yes, of the order paper be stepped down by the leave of the House. I so move. Why well, do you want to step down? If we, have you moved it? Yeah, I've moved it. Yeah. Okay. Step down. Number 13. Number 13? No, 14 was what we stepped down now. What do you have on 13? What's your... Which one did you step down now? Sorry. Okay, I think it's numbered differently from what I have. That's yeah, the problem. So we are taking the report of the Committee on Health service, uh, uh, Sales Services and uh, the one on Ad Health Committee on Security of Service Chiefs. Okay, the 13th hour of the day is consideration of report of the Committee on Healthcare Services on a bill for an act to amend the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency Act, Cap N69, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and for related matters, honorable members will recall that the report was laid on Wednesday, 10 February 2021. And we'll thank you soon, we'll move for its consideration. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I'm Honorable Dr. Yusuf Tankosununu. I represent Ingeski Awudi Federal Constituency and Shanga Federal Constituency of Kebi State. I rise 
present its diagnosis on a bill for an act to amend the National Primary Health Care Development Agency Act, CAB, N69 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. And for related matters, the House Bill Number 39, the part of the 26th of November, 2019. Mr. Speaker, the House on Wednesday, 6th November, 2019, concluded debate on the general principle of the, of the above bill and referred the same to the Committee on Healthcare Services for further legislative action. Okay, so I move for the consideration of the bill by the, by the, for the third reading of the bill. Thank you. Do we have a second, please? Do I have a Idris? Second up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. Our men, Honorable Kapiro Idris, member representing Kura, Madobiga, Rumal, and Tara constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Kano State. I rise to support this very important motion raised by my senior colleague. I so support Mr. Speaker. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, Sabi. The 14th order of the day is consideration of report of the Ad Hoc Committee on the Screening of Nominees for Appointments as Chief of Defense Staff and Service Chiefs of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Honorable members will recall that the report was laid on Tuesday, 23rd February, 2021. Honorable Babajide Adegoke Benson will move for its consideration. Honorable Benson. Honorable Uluga, you want to second? Oh, no. Honorable Coco. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. <clears throat> My name is Honorable Sheo Coco from Kebbi I represent the good people of Coco, Bessie, and Myanmar, federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second that with the House to receive the report of the other committee, I saw second, Mr. Speaker. Motion for consideration moved by Chairman Defense, seconded by Chairman Air Force. Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, Sabi. The House leader is not here. Is the deputy has there? Okay. Chairman of Business and Rules, can you move that we move that the House be resolved into a committee of the whole to consider the report? Mr. So Speaker, honorable colleagues, I am Abubakar Safulata. I represent Bernie Akri, Kassam Aguri, Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I am from Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do resolve into a committee of the whole to consider reports. I saw move. Any second? Nobody wants to go to committee on the whole. Or a leader from where? On the boom right now. I 
Right Honorable Speaker, my Honorable colleagues, I move by rise to second the motion ably moved by the Chairman of some Business for us to refer back to the Committee of the Whole. I am Honorable Dr. Ajibola Muraina. I represent Barakwa Central, Barakwa North, Federal Constituency. I'm from Ohio State. All right. I'll put the question in a minute before I leave you into the safe and capable hands of the Deputy Speaker. But before that, I have um, a couple of things. Okay, we. A minute silence in honor of our late colleague, Honorable Jose. We, can we please rise for a minute? So rest in peace. Minority leader, it's your birthday. I'm sure before the deputy leave the houses are John, they'll sing a happy birthday to you. Um Question has been put. Those in support, please say aye. That is that we resolve to the committee of the whole. Those against, we say nay. The eyes have it. How does the committee of the whole? I cannot kick it. Respected colleagues, the bill to be considered is for an act to amend the National Primary Health Care Development Agency Act Cap N69 Laws of Federation of Nigeria 2004 and related matters. I invite the Honorable Tanko to give us synopsis of the bill. I 
authorized to present the synopsis of a bill for an act to amend the National Primary Health Care Development Agency Act, CAP N69, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and for related matters. HB 39, referred to the committee on the 6th of November, 2019. The House on Wednesday, 6th November, 2019, considered, debated on the general principle of the above bill and referred the same to the Committee on Healthcare Services for further legislative action. The objective of the bill is seeks to amend the National Healthcare Development Agency Act of N69 laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 and for related matters. Highlight of the committee's activity. Following the consideration of the committee uh, of the bill by the committee, the committee met several times and deliberated on the bill. After exhaustive deliberation, it scheduled a public hearing for 23rd of July 2020 and collected memoranda from general public and stakeholders, after which opinions of the participants of the hearing were collated for members' consideration. The consideration was done following the public hearing in a retreat organized by the committee, a three-day retreat organized by the committee from Wednesday 16th to Friday 18th of September 2020 for members and stakeholders to consider the bill and come up with final draft for the House consideration. For the members to consider uh, Go straight the to the look, uh, areas of interest. Okay. The major, uh, the major highlight of the bill uh, includes the inclusion of representative of association of local government as part of the board membership of the agency. The, also, the amendment also seeks to improve intersectoral community participation, use of affordable appropriate technology, equity and social justice in the discharge of function of the agency. The amendment also seeks to establish the legal basis for the transfer of national immunization, hitherto carried out by a national program on immunization to the agency. There is also a need to improve on the interagency and intergovernmental collaboration in, the, in promoting of delivery of primary health care under one roof, which was also addressed by the bill. Finally, all the amendments are, are repressing and deletion were shown in tabula form as led before the House for consideration. The Chairman, the House. colleagues, I want to believe that this is a very straightforward uh, bill uh, from the items introduced as enumerated by him, uh, seeking to include Algon as in the composition of board, uh, board membership, and maybe uh, very few areas that I have seen too. It's not much. Most of them are just additions, small alterations. Uh, those in favor of that, part one be part of the BCI. Part one. Part two. Part two, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, part two, sir. Part those who are not there. Be huh? Page six? Mr. Speaker, page six. Starts from page six. You start page six? It starts from page six. Okay. Part two, I have on, it's on page two. Okay. No. We have carried past part one. Mr. Speaker, there is something fundamental. Please. <laughs> Please. This is consideration. We need to take some measures to do the right thing. Um, just, I crave the indulgence of my colleagues. Please come back to number uh, page two. Let's look at it. Mr. Uh, Minority Leader, this is a law. If what there I'm is something... Saying, what I'm saying, I'm talking about procedure. If you have carried a particular section, to go back, you move a motion to receive... Well, let's hear, let's hear him first. What, what's the issue regarding what I'm saying, I'm not saying Okay, uh, I just want to, the, the committee to just hear me. Yes. Um, the, the establishment on page two, mm. uh, article two, that is the recommendation of the committee, B, where it says a representative of the Minister of Health. I think it should be, I think it should be a representative of 
the Ministry of Health, Federal Ministry of Health, not the minister. If you go down page three, you, you will see representatives are coming from ministries, not the individual head in the ministry. Well, I don't know. You know, the issue is that we will not be able to come up with one fine uh, defined method of how to, what to do in this example. And I'll give you an example. When you get to the, uh, the, the laws now establishing Of the of for appoint, appointments as chiefs of defense uh, and service chiefs of armed forces of Federation of Nigeria, I now invite on Babujide Benson to give the report of the report uh, of the of the report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you may please recall that on February 10, we received correspondence from Mr. President informing us of the nomination of the Chief of Defense Staff and three other service chiefs. Mr. Chairman, you may also recall that this is in accordance with Section 18 of the Armed Forces Act. Mr. Chairman, on the 17th of February, a committee, an ad hoc committee was set up headed by me and members involved in security agencies. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, 
we invited the nominees and we questioned them on various topics ranging from ethics and integrity, professional skill and experience, Nigeria's war on terror and insurgency and banditry, funding of the military, strategic security knowledge and vision, the role of the military in politics, interagency cooperation, personal troops, health and welfare of the armed forces, their leadership style and temperament, strategic communication skill, decisiveness, external military relationship, military hardware and upgrades, military civilian relationship. Mr. Chairman, we found them worthy and we have the following recommendation which is submitted before you, Mr. Chairman. Well, first I appreciate your very thorough and good work by the actual committee. <clears throat> Colleagues, those that are in favor that Major General Loki E. Irabo be confirmed as the Chief of Defense Staff of the Armed Forces of, Niger uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having successfully undergone the screening process, be, be, uh, be, uh, uh, be confirmed. Say aye. Those against say nay. That's a bit. I expect colleagues that those in favor that Major General Ibrahim Atahir will be confirmed as the Chief of the Army Staff of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having successfully undergone the screening process of the committee, become, uh, by the committee become, uh, be confirmed. Say aye. Those against say nay. That's a bit. I expect colleagues, those in favor that Rear Admiral Awal Zubero Gambo be confirmed as the Chief of Naval Staff of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, have you successfully undergone the screening process uh, CI? Those against say nay. That's a big. The spirit is those in favor that Air Vice Marshal Ishiaka Oladayo Amao be confirmed as the Chief of Air Staff of the Armed Forces of, uh, Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Have you successfully undergone the, uh, the screening process by the committee CI? Those against say nay. That's a big. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Move that over to plan to report progress. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. I am Abubakar Safulata. I represent Bernie Creek as I'm a very further concern, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Jigar State. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do revert to primary to report progress. I so move. Chief uh, Deputy Whip. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against say nay. That's a bit. As we have to report uh, progress. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, The House in the Committee of the World considered the report of the Committee on Healthcare Services on, on a bill for an act to amend the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency Act, CAP N69, Laws of Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and for this matter, and approve clauses 1 to 17, the schedules, the explanatory memoranda, and the long title of the bill. The special colleagues, the House and the Committee of the Whole considered the report of the Adult Committee on the screening of nominees for the appointment of, of uh, a service, uh, for appointment of service 
uh, as chief of defense staff and service chiefs of the armed forces uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria approved the, uh, the four recommendations of the report. Move for the adoption of the report. So speaker, honorable colleagues, I am Abakas of Lata. I represent the mayor of Kirika Samagri for the Consensus, Mr. Speaker, from the Gauss State. Mr. So speaker, I move that the House to approve the recommendations of the Committee of the Whole. I so move. Second, honorable lady. My name is Engineer Suleiman Ali Lere. I represent Lere Federal Constituency of Kaduna State. I rise to support the motion and to second the motion by Honorable Flatter. I so second. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against say nay. That is it. Yes, sir. Chairman, they have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, sir, I come under personal explanation, Mr. Speaker, to officially report on the incidents, fatal incident that happened on Sunday, on 21st day of February 2021, at the airport, where a plane belonging to Nigerian Air Force crashed with our seven gallant officers. All lost their life. Uh, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, this is a very unfortunate incident that happened. But it happened because of the, though I don't want to preempt the investigation, but so reported, it is widely reported that it's a technical issue that happened with the, one of the engines of the aircraft. But sir, uh, I want to report that the pilot the pilots of the aircraft tried all possible best because I and the air staff visited the scene. We are so lucky myself. I was at the airport when the thing happened and I just waited for the air staff. He, he, he came to the airport. We went there. We saw what happened. That pilot tried. He could have run or crashed land into a nearby village at the airport because the scene of the incident is just like 30 seconds to the runway. But he has uh, honestly tried all his best, but as a Muslim myself, and I have to say the will of God, and it happens. So as a member of the House and the chair chairman of the Air Force, I'm praying the House will uh, either send a delegation uh, to the chair Air Staff to condone him and condone Mr. President of the ugly incident that happened and uh, give a one minute silence of, uh, to our officers. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I think this is a very stark uh, thought uh, point of all our information coming from the chairman. Uh, we are all aware of the sad incident that happened uh, before us as a nation of our gallant young officers who happened to die in a very unfortunate accident that occurred some few days ago. May their soldiers in perfect peace. And I think the press is simple that we send condolence messages believe to the family, to the President and Commander of Nigeria, and then observe one, uh, one minute's uh, silence in their honor. Those in favor of the, uh, the prayer say aye. Against say nay. That's a bit. Can we rise for one minute silence? Source of the party rest in perfect peace. Can you move out the drama of the house? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I am Abu Bakr Hassan Fulata. I represent Bernua Krika Sama Gurifa de Consuelo, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Jigao State. Mr. So Speaker, honorable colleagues, I move that the house do adjourn to Tuesday, 24th of February, 2021. I saw move. So Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday 24th, 
the house, I moved at the house to adjourn to tomorrow, Wednesday, 24th of February, 2021. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Engineer Santomi Ahmed. I represent the good people of Jerry Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion moved by Chairman Roots and Business for the adjournment of this house to tomorrow, Wednesday. Also, second Mr. Speaker. Sir. Those in favor of the motion that the house to adjourn to tomorrow, 11 say aye. aye. Against any, that is a bit. House up here by adjourn to tomorrow, 11 a.m.